Come on. What up, guys? Give me a give me a minute. I'm just making a quick smoothie. I'll jump on right now.
What's up, guys? Can you guys hear me? Hey, Carlos. Yeah, um, I've got you. All right, cool, man. Cool. I'm just upload. I mean, I'm just jumping on my laptop real quick. Okay. So I can open up the Zoom. Then we'll get started. Hey, Carlos. How are you? Good, man. You? Hey, uh, um, I just wanted to let you know, bro, I I'm messaging the Larry, you know, the, the guy that we wanted to call today. Yeah, I've seen the messages come in right now. Oh, okay, yeah. He just responded that tonight might not be a good time. He wants to see tomorrow. Should I try to, so should we try to schedule him tomorrow around this time? We can schedule it tomorrow on this time or, or, or we could do it a little bit earlier, whatever, get it out the way. I like doing them live, but usually Mondays, it's hard for me to do live calls before three. So, because I have so many things to do on a Monday and then, yeah. um, so usually three, three to six is easiest to get me on a live call. Other than that, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we can jump on a different time or, or All right, perfect. Uh, I'll see what time he tells me works best for him. See if we could, I mean, life would be better that way we could like analyze I'll always it. Record it though. I'm always yeah. going to record it though. So I'll always have a record no matter what live or not like live with us or like you would need one-on-one. -on -one. I'm going to record it no matter what. All right, for sure. Yeah, well, just let me, um, I'm going to see what time he gives me, and then um, that way I'll let you know if we just uh, call him in earlier uh, by the live. All right, cool. Give me one minute. I'm just going to switch my dogs real quick. Yeah, for live. sure. Let me go.
What's up? What's up, guys? Better to rock. Better to rock. What's up, man? What up? What up? How much? How's everybody doing? Great. And you? And I'm always good. Always good. Good, busy Monday. Roll. I mean, my Saturday and Sunday were really busy, too. Uh, so it's always good. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, cool, guys. Um, Q&A, I guess we could do a Um, don't understand a certain process, how to negotiate a certain strategy. Let me know before we get into some live calls. Um, if you guys need anything that can help you out, I'll assist you guys with, okay? No questions, no questions. Like we're good. I I don't have like a I mean I have a question, but it's more like an opinion, so okay. to speak. Uh yeah, so I've been I kind of was helping underwrite a, a deal for uh somebody in the TTP community. The rehab budget's crazy high. My my question is really, I don't want to get into the details. My question is at the price point over a million in Texas, I mean, would you think that's even something that um I mean, creatively, we can do it, right? But this would be like a flip. Do you think flips are, I guess, doable in this market right now? Is my question. The rehab budget's like four twenty-two, give or take. Four hundred and twenty-two thousand for rehab. Four hundred and twenty-two. Yeah, it's a total burn down. Okay. <laughs> Price point. Over the Price on this thing. The after repair value would be over a million. And the purchase price is? Oh, let me look at it here. Let's see. They agreed to. Over there, guys. Did you hear Mason? Did you did you find out the the purchase price? Sorry, man. I was talking. My I was on mute the whole time. Yeah, it's a uh, seven fifty. Seven. Obviously, that would have to be that have to be negotiated down. Obviously, which he was a not totally against, but uh, yeah. I mean, this guy was not totally against negotiating it when it's a complete burn down. Yeah, he's he's a little bit unrealistic, of course, right now. I think it's because he's not like here dealing with it. I don't know if he's out of town because of Christmas or whatever, but he went from like 500 to 750. So, and it's a total burn down. The, the guy who's working the deal, he's like a, a, a fire, what you call it. He's an adjuster for for that that an insurance company who deals with fire. So he saw the deal and said, "Man, this is a good deal, possibly, if they were if he was able to get it, you know, uh, at a creative offer." <clears throat> so yeah, I guess my question is, I mean, the 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 numbers are kind of high. The flipping people, the people who are doing flips right now, I'm not sure are as active as much. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, for for you to, for you to do a flip because of this unstable market, we just hit the recession like six months ago. It's very unstable. Yeah. Markets were rising, prices are going down. Interest rates have kind of gone down a little bit, but they're still extremely high. The way you look at it is, you get a really good deal. You have to get a really good deal for it to make sense. Um, yeah. When you're buying cash right now, so most buyers, um, if they were buying in your market, depending on your market, if they're buying at eighty or ninety percent of the ARV price minus repairs. Those same buyers are probably dropping it down 50, 60 to 70 percent, depending on how hot the market is. Some places where I live, because I live in California, some uh, buyers are still buying up to 70 percent. Um, for a fix and flip that is like a complete burn down, you actually want to get that like at, you know, like 20 cents on the dollar or something like that. 30 cents on the dollar. like Because 
it's going to take a lot of time. Check it out, a whole burn, right? You want to get like a 20 cents on the dollar because it's going to take X amount of months to get this done in an unstable market, which we don't know what's going to happen on that price in the next five or six months. I mean, it's not going to go up, but I don't know how much more it's going to go down. So because we can't predict it, you want to basically go ahead and, and be conservative. And like Duran said, they're not treated like a vacant lot, basically. It just needs to be basically wiped out. And then do else. Yeah, you definitely want to get 18 to 20% on burnouts as low as you can. Yeah. This homeowner is going to be sitting on it. It's burnt down. It's probably paid off or whatnot. He's going to sit on it. And we can do a novation. It's a little bit different where, right. um, but still that 455,000, that's not going to work, right? You could, you could maybe give him the money he's looking for, but that, I don't even think 500 would work. You know, I honestly don't think that's going to work either. 500, like you'd have to be, like I said, 200,000 or something, 300,000. I mean, he has, he's, he's not doing anything on the deal. He, it's a firm deal. And he wants to, the person wants to be uh, very firm. This could be a follow-up call or like, you know, you just let them know what you can do and how you look at these deals. This is a, this is like basically land. You've got a whole burn home on it, right? So I'm going to have to replace right. even how long it's going to take me. And then in this unstable market, when nobody knows what's happening, I mean, it's like 2008, we're going to go down, we're going to continue. So it doesn't make sense for you to lock it up at 70 or 80% because that's what a, a fix and flip home you should be locking it up at. Not you, yeah, I know you're right somebody else. Yeah, I'm just giving you insight. Yeah, you're good. Cool, cool, cool. I think uh, this that, that deal is actually uh, with 20. I don't see him. Oh, yeah. he he sometimes he's on the calls. He texted me like five times. I was, just, I was so busy this morning. I had to get back to him. Okay, cool. I was hoping he'd be here. So maybe he'd go with it more. But it's all good. Thanks, Carlos. No oh, problem. Hey, got a party going on back there. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so. Hey, Carlos, did you. You, you said uh, we can ask questions kind of about, you know, negotiations and closing as well. Everything you want. Yeah. Um, you guys, if you guys know Ricky, Ricky Rodriguez, he's one of, he's on the acquisitions team. Um, one of the powerhouse acquisitions first members. Um, Ricky, just say what's up to everybody. And yes, I can answer not only acquisitions, but I can answer whatever you have. And if, if, if I'm able to have that answer, I'll give it to you. Okay. Yeah. Um, I guess my name is Ricky, uh, originally born and raised. In Colorado, uh, joined the military 2015, uh, got out 2020, uh, 2020 uh, moved to Florida, and I've been kind of wholesaling. I just learned how to do novations um, ever since. So, yeah, I'm, I'm in the Florida market, St. Pete, uh, Manatee County, Pinellas County. Um, yeah, yeah, Carlos, I was just curious, you know, right now I'm my biggest struggle is, you know, <clears throat> I'm generating leads. I'm just uh, not converting and closing deals. Mm -hmm. So, I'm, I mean, that's, you know, that's kind of, I guess, for everyone, that's the main reason why I'm here, you know, right. you know to, to close deals. Yeah. So, so lead generation is, is very vital for anybody's business. Even if you do not do the acquisitions in your department, lead generation okay. It's very, very important. Nobody. Reason why is it brings new potential clients to your table, right? So that they can feed your family, your business, whatever you're trying to do. Lead generation is very valuable. Like how you said, I'm getting lead gen, but I'm having trouble closing, right? So that we're going to be able to help you that, help you out here today and throughout the time you're with us. The, the close is typically in the follow-up. And so you kind of want to start to level those skills up so these people who are now open to you and your business model they're warm and they're open to working with you but you have to figure out how this is going to get done right so the follow-up is where all the clothes and the majority of the money is going to be made you got to continue always doing the lead gen it takes a lot of time to build momentum i'm sure everybody knows how long it took the first few months just to get people to say yeah the day you fill your pipeline doesn't mean because you're busy now because with your follow-ups that you let go of your foot off that gas because what happens is you actually break the momentum cycle and it's going to take the exact energy and momentum to rebuild the whole thing um the only thing is now from you doing a follow-up to doing the initial lead gen 
for you to start progressing and getting deals done. Your skill level or your team who's running your acquisition department, their skill level now has to be tuned up. There's no reason for somebody to learn how to do all these strategies, wholesaling, create a finance, innovation, and you not tune up the way you can close those deals. And if you pay for a VA and an acquisitions person, the VA is cool. You don't have to worry too much. They just got to get the lead vetted. But your acquisitions person, you don't want to throw in a random person that's just open the con. You want to be able to know if they're able to close deals. Somebody's going to have to learn. The person on your team or you. That's what we have here. I believe most people are going to learn the majority of how to overcome objections or how bold you can stand on calls in live calls like this with live sellers like yours and they're recorded. So we post them up and you're going to hear somebody who's experienced that closing, show you how to do it. And here's the cool thing about that part. A lot of people say they close deals in their closers, but maybe they just close some deals. True closers have just been around enough to have heard similar stories that almost every story or situation or problem that a family has is pretty similar to something you heard last year six months ago, two years ago, three weeks ago. That's what happened. That's that's what will happen. And then you'll be able to understand how to close every deal or why we can't get this done today or later or at all. And it's really just about fact finding. And that's kind of what we push right here. Live calls, and then you're in the program. So you see all the other stuff we're adding to it. Repeat the action, come in here a little bit, a little consistent, kind of like it's a gym, right? Like, you, hey, come over here. And get in here, get in and train here every every day for a little bit. The way that I explained it earlier on the phone, when I worked with Ford for Cadillac as a director of sales for AT and T and Direct TV, I had my own contracts. When you close high ticket sales, I wasn't a sales clerk for Direct TV. I went state to state to go ahead and show other offices how to increase their sales. Each company that poured money into somebody to make sure they're going to represent themselves and bring in money. Before I was able to go on the playing field, before I was able to get on the phone calls door to door, or before I was able to sell a car on the floor, they made sure that I went on modules and learned everything about Chevrolet or DirecTV or Ford or Cadillac or whoever I was with at the time, the door to door alarm systems. And I had to learn the modules, just like any mentorship you guys are in, you kind of learn the modules a little bit and learn the understanding of everything. And the next week, our manager, our experienced manager, then came on to the sales floor, whether Direct TV, where I was at, at t those services, or whether I was with Ford or Cadillac or Chevrolet or GMC or Buick at those times. Um, they would then have a very experienced salesman or closer to come in and show me how to present the deal correctly, how to find out if these people are in the market with us or not, if they're open to working with us, kind of thing like that. And then from, from there, it just became easier. Once they showed me that part, then the next step before we were released to do on our own, they at least make sure we knew how to negotiate and ran the numbers. And so they, we would be straddling them in live transactions. And then they were like, you're ready to be on the floor. And here's why companies do that. Because as us, as we're entrepreneurs, we get paid commission. Well, let's say I hired, let's say I hired Mason on as an employee and said, hey, now that you're legally my employee, I, I owe you a wage. But here's the cool thing. You either get this minimum wage, but if you close a couple of deals this week, you'll get a commission instead, right? Well, if I then didn't spend money training people the way that I explained some of these companies did, and it takes the same thing. Someone has to take action after learning it. What happens is typically if Mason works for me and does not close any deals during the two weeks, every two week period, I'm having to take money out of my pocket. And now Mason is an expense. I'm losing money every week on this guy. I'm actually forfeiting money, even though he's in my, on the sales team where he's supposed to rev up the sales. Now, my transactional coordinators on my front desk are all these. These are just wage people that don't even bring in money for the business. They just manage and do all the paperwork. If Mason's a salesman, if you're the salesman negotiator on your team and you're not looking at it like that, what happens is you become an expense in your own business and you don't know it because you're running out of your own expenses. So it's not like you're losing it on spending it on somebody else, but you're losing it on yourself, right? And then there's those people who take action right away and start closing mad deals and they don't even go to their, their minimum wage pay. They automatically get commission. Why people like them or like why I like people who are stronger that can close is because I'm no longer taking money out of my bank account or out of my pocket to pay Mason. 
because Mason is closing so many deals that really he's making a lot of money and he's making his own money on the top of those deals. I no longer see him as an expense like that. He's taking the money off of the deals he closed. So I'm not losing anything that was already sitting in my bank account. It's only increasing minus his cut. And it took a lot of people and a lot of training and like there's there, they poured a lot of money into business and sales over the last hundred years of how to do this. The best way is that way is you definitely want to train yourself just like mentoring, right? Like I said, jumping into a mentorship, the whole selling creative financing. Well, who's showing the closing part other than the role play and my calls? Who's showing the people how to do the right, you know, day-to-day -day action on closing because of the script. A script is hard. A script is hard for you to actually get good at closing because it only allows you to remember what the script says. So if it's like, hey, why do you want to sell the house? I'm tired of living there. Okay, in what time frame? You don't know how to dig into why do you want to sell? I'm a tired landlord, but why? What's going on? My tenants aren't paying. Oh, that's not fair. How long have they not been paying? Three months. How much were they supposed to pay you those three months? 1200 a month. So you lost out on 3600 right? Yeah, well, do you have to do you have a mortgage and a payment on that? Yeah, the thousand. So you really lost three thousand. That's not fair. Do you think this will ever change for you or no? It won't. Then you move on, right? The script won't tell you how to do that. The script won't. They just allow you to remember what the hell is on that page and then read it word for word. Sales training for your own business. If you're the one that has to close your own deals, for sure, recommend you to look at it like this. Hey, I should take a step back and consistently work on this skill for at least a couple of weeks consistently because nobody ever got great at something doing it part-time one one week on monday right like when you started working out you started driving your car you started tying and shooting whatever the hell you were doing for the first time when you're playing a sport i mean doing it once a week for an hour or two for eight eight to twelve weeks ain't going to teach you much shit it's going to be very hard because it first you're not consistent enough second you don't know that much about what you're doing so if you have to break it up seven days apart, how much can you really consume and how much can you really like retain in there, right? So it's like this, fastest ways to get good at sport, to get back into shape, everything is okay. Five days a week, I'm gonna go practice on that sport. Five days a week, I'm gonna go to the gym and diet and, and everything else and do cardio. If you're not willing to do that, you're gonna be stuck where you're at right now. And it ain't, it ain't gonna ever change. You're gonna get smarter. You're gonna know creative financing, you're gonna know wraps, but you ain't gonna ever start closing more deals unless one, you get better, or two, you hire the right person on your team to close. And that's the truth. Okay, let's do this. So we got the first call with Bo. All right, cool, Bo. So we'll go ahead and call your guy first. That camera lens makes you look like a Wow, ah, looks a lot better than it used to be a crappy camera lens. Um, all right, Bo. So we can call your lead up, man. We'll go ahead and get this. You already sent me all the, the info, my text, the address, and whatnot. Let me pass it up. Rigo, I'm down for yours too. Let me go through Bo. We'll go through Rigo. And then I got Duran. I got a whole bunch of calls today to do. So let me do this. Bo is the Duran. Rigo, Christina, everybody's leads. Okay. And I got Dustin's leads today too. Cool. Let's knock these out of the park. Bo, are you there? Ready to rock? If not, we'll roll into some of the houses real quick. Hey, uh, Carlos, you there? I am. Hey, man. All What's right. Up, can, you, can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, awesome. Look, I... Um, <laughs> We had he he went ahead and called me at five, so I was just speaking with him. Okay. Uh, good news is, man, he agreed to the terms. <laughs> so oh, dude, you can solve it. Okay, you tell us what happened then, since yeah. I was going to call him sleep, but Bo, Bo ended up just doing his own thing. He thought he needed my help, but he went in and did his own thing. No, man. Well, look, yeah. So, all right. So, I'll walk you guys through it. Uh, what's up, everybody? My name is Bo. 
I'm an investor wholesaler here in Middle Tennessee for some context. Uh, I've done a couple, I've actually done about seven deals, traditional wholesale, and started learning about creative finance. So I reached out to Mason and Carlos, and they've been pretty incredible to work with. So um, so I had a, um, a guy that I had to deal with uh, back in October, actually, and he had a, a house that had burned on the inside. And um, we went under contract, we weren't able to do anything. And I said, look, you know, if you've got any other properties that you're looking to sell, I'll look at them. And we also do owner financing. You know, at the time, I really didn't know how to do owner financing, but I could figure it out. So he was like, okay, yeah, let's, uh, let's do it. I'll send you some properties that I'm interested in selling. And so he sent them over to me and it's been kind of a six to seven week process at this point. The properties he sent over when I looked at them, I got disappointed because they looked like mobile homes. And sure enough, they were mobile homes. But then I found out they were on a fixed foundation. So they're all on cinder block that can't be moved. And so I did a little bit more digging and I found out, okay, you can actually get those financed. And so I decided to continue to pursue the deal. So um, the next round was, was asking about, uh, you know, who are the tenants? You know, what are their intentions? Do they need to stay? Can they go? And it turns out that he's got lease purchase agreements with those tenants in place, which was another hurdle that we had to cross. And so um, I put a call into my title attorney and I said, hey, we're looking about doing this deal. There's lease purchase agreements in place. What do I need to you know, consider? And she said, well, in the state of Tennessee, in the contract, it has to explicitly say that the lease purchase agreement is not assumable um, for it to not be you know, transferred over at the time of closing. So we went through the lease purchase agreements and it doesn't have that clause included in there, meaning we can assume the lease purchase um, when we buy the house. So then the question became, all right, well, what did he contract the purchase agreement for? Uh, and let me turn on my camera so you guys can see me. All right, there I am. So then, um, <clears throat> so then it, we found out that, okay, he, he put these under contract in 2018 and 2019 before this crazy price appreciation happened. And I said, look, in order for this to make any sense for me or any investor, we have to, you know, get it for a price lower than what you've contracted to sell it for. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense as an investment to do, right? Because if you have this person that has the, the first option to buy the home at a specified price, you can't buy it for more than that because you'll lose money if they decide to exercise that option. So he said, okay, look, give me this amount. And it was an amount that um, it's basically the equity that he had in the house. Uh, there's no, there's no current mortgage on it. Um, and it was the amounts on both of them were about half of the Redfin and Zillow estimates. And they were less than the purchase uh, price that he gave to the tenant. So it, it worked out. And so we spoke about the price uh, and then we said, okay, in terms of the, um, the, the remaining terms, what are, you, what are you interested in? What do you want down? What are you looking to get per month? How, how many years out do you want to um, schedule this? And we went back and forth on that for quite a bit. Uh, and Carlos and, and Mason were kind of helping me along the way with those questions. And so ultimately what he agreed to was, um, uh, basically $20,000 down on each property um, with payments of $300 for one and $260 for another. Uh, but the really cool thing about this is that the tenants who are in place on one property are already paying $900 a month and tenants on another property are paying $1,000 a month. So the cash flow just on, or the difference between the, um, paying the, the payment to the, to the owner and the, the, and getting the, the lease payment is about six or $700 for each property. So it's a pretty good cash flow. Um, you know, uh, $20,000 for a property that cash flows um, at about 
$8,400 a year is not a bad cash on cash return. So um, that is what it amounted to. And so that's what he agreed to verbally. Um, I said, the last thing I need to do is just come see the properties. I haven't even seen them yet. So I'm going to go out there probably Wednesday, uh, take a look at them, take some photos. And then, you know, I'll be, I'm going to consider these, I'm going to consider partnering with these with my brother, potentially he and I've done some deals in the past, but we're also, I'm also going to seriously consider just assigning it out. It depends on what, you know, a good assignment fee would be for each of these. And I've never done a creative deal, so I don't necessarily know, you know, how to bake in the assignment fee for that, uh, Carlos. Well, how would you, first of all, any questions from anybody on all of that before I start peppering Carlos with my question? Awesome deal that you got, man. That's pretty, pretty insane. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks, man. That's amazing. Uh, it was a, <laughs> it's a journey. It's still a journey. You know, we'll see. Um, hopefully it comes through. Uh, right now it's looking like it will. So, um, and then we'll have signatures by the end of the week, I hope. Thank you. Wow. Hey, awesome. Good. <clears throat> awesome. Awesome job. Yeah, man. Good stuff, bro. So yeah. 20 grand down a piece and they'll make, they both rent from nine to 1000, right? Yep. Cool. Fire cash on cash return right there. You know, nine, yeah. a hundred thousand bucks a month and you're willing, he's willing to let you make, you know, seven, six, seven hundred bucks on one and what, like four or five hundred on the other. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, the last, yes, you're right. So the last thing I forgot to say though, is the payment terms. So the reason that we we're able to get the payment so low is because it's principal only and it balloons in two years. So the balance is due at the end of a two year period, as opposed to a longer, you know, three or five year period. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So then you also got to consider your taxes and insurance on the property. On yeah. That price. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, right. Some states are different. Like California, it's like, I believe taxes are like 1% of the purchase price. And like Texas okay. is 3% of 80% of the purchase price. And then you still have to factor in the other 20%. Mm. For yeah. Yep, yep, yep. I have like three three homes in Texas and I'm still working on another one right now. Uh, that's good, man. That's something I, I, I thought about that during the conversation was to ask him about taxes and ins insurance, but we didn't. So we principal didn't interest, tax and insurance. If it's mm -hmm. a seller finance, try to avoid interest. But yeah. uh, what's the tax and insurance on something like this? What are you paying right now? So you can kind of see what he's currently paying and yours is probably going to adjust due to the purchase price that you're giving him. That's now you're going to be the taxes you're going to be having to okay. be like whatever the purchase price is. Then you're going to go ahead and divide it by one percent or whatever, and then break that into a twelve month payment or whatever. Got it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it won't be quite as sweet as what I was thinking then, but it's it'll still cash flow after principal taxes and insurance because we're not going to pay interest. Yeah. Over that so two year period, it could be a really good deal. Twenty twenty thousand dollars is not a lot. Even if even check this out. A lot of people are cool with 10 to 15%, $20,000. That's like two to 2,500 annual income that they're actually making net into the profit, into the pocket. Mm -hmm. So that could be good, right? He's open to working with you. What I recommend my, my members and everybody in here that to do is once they're already open working with you, you come in with a game plan to sweeten the money down. You, Hey, look, I could still do this. This is where we're at though. And try to reduce the amount of money down just by a little mm -hmm. bit and see See, so reduce it like if your goal is to get at least two or three to four grand off, hit them with like six or seven grand off. Mm -hmm. And then if they say no, cool. I mean, I this is probably the max I can do 17,000 instead of 20. I mean, I know I wanted to be at 14 because I wrote the deal that made sense like that because it is a short term and downshifting market. I would try to elongate the uh, the term though, due to yeah. Like, to the fact that typically you're going to go ahead and, and clear out the remaining debt through some type of refinance option and yeah. you typically want to be able to pay everything off in the same deals without having to um without you having to use money from a different deal right like collateralized deals and stuff like that yeah in the beginning in the beginning yes you know you have to fund your own you know personal money into your business 
but eventually you want the business to pay for itself, right? Like mm -hmm. on homes where I have one or two homes that didn't have any equity that I needed lenders and that I didn't use them as partners. And so yeah. those two deals, I might not be able to balance them out. And I'll let them know. I told them, I might not be able to balance you out on the same property, but I have all these extra properties that I'll do. Though I, don't, I wouldn't want to, but they were good deals. So I did that. So in scenarios, I was talking to my partner earlier today about one deal. And we happened to get a really, really good offer on that deal where I no longer want to sell the note. I want to hold it because somebody, I, I dropped it in escrow for $100,000 over what I bought it for on terms. I didn't even renovate it. Somebody called me and says, I'll pay another 40 grand on top, but with like no interest. And I'm like, well, still that's 40 grand extra on top. I'll be $140,000 on top of what I bought it for. Yeah. And I'm like, well, that deal, I only borrowed 17,500 and I got to balloon it in like three months. I'm like, Brad, you and I could just, you know, pay off that 17,500 and then we can just cash flow on this puppy and make all the money on it. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, whatever. So it just depends on how you know how to see your exits, but um, yeah. so for you to get good assignment fees, right? You want to get 10, 15,000 plus, get some big cash flow and, and or some equity and or low amount of money down. Low amount of money down will help you out. The less because you'll look at the, the annual uh return on it. Well, if somebody's gonna pay you 10 grand, they're gonna have to factor that in 20 grand yeah. and then 10 grand and then closing costs, right? Yeah, any renovation costs. Oh, is it gonna take me two months to renovate? Well, I gotta make two payments. That's why it's being yeah. renovated. So you put yeah. these fees in and you'll see. And, and here, let me go ahead and, and put down the entry fees on the side chat. Okay. Number one is uh, money down to seller. Number two is if there are any arrears, those need to be taken care of. Number three is uh any assignment fees or commissions to agents or closing costs typically one and a half percent some places are two percent depending on the of the purchase price five um renovations six holding and maintenance costs if you're doing Airbnb furnishings, um, holding costs are, like I said, oh, I need to renovate some of it. It's going to take me two months. Well, how much am I paying you per month? 300 bucks. So I need $600 as well to, to factor that into my entry fee, right? So that's yeah. holding costs. If you're doing furnishings, that's up to you. If you're going to furnish it for a short-term rental, you have to figure out what your budget's going to be. Um, and then seven is, seven is a uh, marketing costs which is if you paid any websites to post that you're selling this property or whatever, or you paid an agent, you know, a fee or something to just let others know that you're selling your property on seller finance or whatever it is. If you're paying some type of fee to get this property off your hands, you would then include that as well. Okay. And there we go. So I, I put it on the side chat. If you guys, you guys can copy that down if you want to keep it. As an end buyer for a deal, this is how I look at a deal to underwrite it. Okay. But Bo bought me a deal and he said, Hey, man, it's $20,000 down and 10 to me. Let's say, Hey, it's $30,000 assignment or entry fee. I'm like, Okay, those $30,000, does that include everything or is it just money to the seller and money to you? Yeah, it's just money to the seller and I. Okay, cool. Well, I have other fees that I have to incur, which are typically, if there are any arrears, I got to take that into consideration. If there's a, a, a commission to an agent besides your wholesale fee, if there's closing costs, which there is, if I'm trying to buy it, right? Any renovations and then holding. So typically it will be like a holding cost or so it will typically be money to the seller, then an assignment fee, closing costs, and either holding or renovations. Not all the time you'll get, you know, all seven. There are times where I get all seven in there but a lot of the times it'll just be either money down to the seller somebody's assignment fee of closing costs and typically renovation and holding those are like the most important ones that always usually come into the deals that i see yeah but you guys want to remember that when you're marketing to your end buyer and so how you look at it again you look at it is okay you want to charge ten thousand. what's their cash on cash return just like how you were seeing it right you're annualizing 20 grand and it's making 8400 
and you're like, okay, well, 20 grand at 10% return is 2,000, right? We times that by three, right? We're at 30, 30% and we're now at 6,000, but you could still bring in 8,400. So putting $20,000 down and bringing in $8,400 um, profit, like net profit becomes like a 40% cash on cash return. So if I were to say, okay, it's now 30,000 instead of $20,000 entry fee. Yeah. Now you run the numbers again, even if it's still at 20 plus percent, bro, that's still a deal. Like people are cool at 10 to 15%. Most people want to be at that 12 plus percent on their money. Okay. Um, so if you could just know, okay, if I could still get them 12, 15% and charge 10, 20 grand in there, if you can still get that number, or even if you can get it even higher, like let's say you put 20 grand and they still get in 20%. It's like, okay, I'm with it because it still works. That's how either some type of equity or enough cash flow when you put all the numbers down, um, the total entry fee, 50 grand, like a deal that I was working last week that I should be closing this week. I did a live call on this deal in Florida. Homeowner wanted 420,000 for the purchase price, $50,000 down. I think I showed it to TTP on Friday, actually, if you were, if you were in there, Bo, that one call that I had. Mm -hmm. uh, the $50,000 down, and I said, okay, well, $50,000 down is the house was free and clear and the market rent was 2,400 and it was, it was like renovated. I said, with that much money, I mean, that, that's, you're going to allow me to make the majority of the money on this thing? He said, yeah. And so I basically where I left it off was 420,000 purchase price, $50,000 down, 4% interest, 55 year amortization schedule. And it was like a, wow. like a $1,300 payment. And so now he was allowing me to make $1,100 net, 1100 net times 12 is what, like 14 grand. Well, if somebody putting $50,000 down at 10%, that's five G's at 20%. That's 10 G's. Now I'm like, okay, this is like 25 to 30%, even with $50,000 down, this is a deal. Maybe not for me to, to buy it. Um, but a wholesaler would definitely, or I mean, another investor will buy this for $50,000 down and to be able to make 12, 15 grand a, a year on this, that's a solid deal right there. My goal is now after he spoke to his attorney, my goal is now to sweeten the whole deal up. Now I'm going to push for $35,000 down and probably meet him at 40 to 42 to 43 down. And then I'm going to try to push for a 60 to 65 year am so I can make a little bit more money. And I'm going to go until he says no. I'm going to go until he, until he tells me no or he's about to hang up. That's when I knew I should stop. Trained by a set, trained by a hardcore salesman. This is, this is how we were trained. I'm going to show you how to sweeten up things. Once they're already open to it, the next call is sweeten that shit up. No matter what, you already heard him a thousand times. No, I can't do this. I can't do that. It doesn't matter. You already went through it a thousand. Do it one more time and go in there. I wrote this down. This is what I can do. And then have your max ready to go. Like, okay, I can jump up a little bit more and see yeah. what happens. If you don't, then cool. You're already underwrote it to, to make sense. And if you win, higher fee for you or higher cash on cash return for you. Get me? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's good, man. Um, so, so let me ask you this. Um, uh, for a, a two-year balloon, um, I mean, they're sitting at like six, 55, 60% of the, of the Redfin and the Zillow estimate. I mean, couldn't I, or some, some investors just go in there and refinance it and get the cash out almost immediately and pay him sooner. Um, I guess yeah, just, at 50 percent numbers. So at 50 percent, like if this deal was, you know, creative and then wanted market price, it wouldn't make sense to uh, for us to refinance because then we would get market interest at market price and that would kill yeah. your cash flow. That would right. kill it. But in this deal, in this scenario, you could lock it up and even show it as a, as a sub two, but you might even have a cash buyer to be like, I'll buy it cash, bro. Because yeah. if you're getting at 50 to 60% and somebody's like, okay, well, I could refinance it and still get six or 7%. It's a high interest, but they have a reduced price, which means that yeah. their payment is still less than market rent. That could yeah. still work, right? Like this whole deal can still be worked as a, a creative guy can buy it and just like automatically refinance it in like five, six months if he wanted and get you yeah. completely out of the deal. And now he has a new loan at like a high interest rate, but he is going to be, you still making a lot of money on it. So yeah, I believe that somebody can do that. My, my thing is I'm not trying to lock up anything at two years and I blame the market. It has to be a bad guy. When I worked in the car business, I was a salesman. You guys all probably purchased cars. It's probably been annoying. You've probably seen a, a salesman, then a closer. Then there's somebody that's underwriting the deal. Well, 
our 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 uh, underwriter, the one who controlled all the numbers, he would say he would when I go in his office and renegotiate with him to then see what I can negotiate with the clients. He would say, "Use me as the bad guy." This, yeah, we can agree with them right now. They're totally fine. They got to prove that this interest rate, that two percent, their payment is six hundred bucks with that two thousand dollars down. Don't let them know that though. Fuck that. Let's go make some more money. Go and tell them they got a six percent. So then we could. So the car business is the same. We did wraps and everything, unwrapped deals, same shit. That's why it's pretty familiar. I'm pretty pretty familiar with this stuff. So he'd be like, "Okay, cool. Well, yeah, we got them approved. This makes sense. Go back out there and tell them that no, he didn't get approved that two percent. He got a six and make his payment a lot higher, and then get get more money down. And blame me. Say like when you go over there, blame me. I'm the bad guy here. Hey, look, I'm I'm on your side, bro." I'm, I really want you to get this deal because I get paid and I need to feed my family. But you see that guy over there? You see how he's always grumpy? He doesn't look happy. That guy, he's a bad guy, man. He doesn't he doesn't always let me win. Like when I, I've already got him a deal and you're committed to this and he's still telling me, no, I can't do this. This is where we need to be for him to say yes. Even though I already got you approved, everything ready to go, I was just playing you. I was sweetening the deal. I was just playing you, homie. I was trying to make more money. And I get it all the time. And now that you hear that, you're like, son of a bitch, they got me, right? This is how it happens. I would go and, and sweeten the deals and I would use a bad guy in this scenario. We're in the recession, man. Like if this was in the beginning of the year or a year ago, yeah, I would have bought it this at 12 months on payment or two years. But due to this market crash, right? It's like 2008. Yeah. It took us yeah. 10 years, 12 years for us to come up, right? I'm not doing anything for two, two to five years because I know that I'm going to have to balloon you in that time. And typically the way that I do that, I go refinance. So if I go refinance when the market is only going lower and lower, I might not even be able to balloon you and I might not be able to perform the way I want to. And I don't want to have to call you and then renegotiate while I'm breaching contract. I'm not doing that right now because the because of the market doing this. I have to do a minimum of five plus years, though you depending because you do have a good deal here. It could work. I'm just trying to show you always how to sweeten it. Remember, you don't have to believe or agree to the salary, even though you already overcame a lot. That's the thing. Most people will get stuck right here. They finally got comfortable with this seller because he was very aggressive or she was very aggressive. And they finally became open. It took some time. Go until they stop answering you. They won't do that because you're already that distance. But what I'm trying to say is go the distance and watch the power you get and see how much better each deal will get if you learn to practice that way. Very yeah. valuable. It's, it's once you start getting seasoned, you'll start to understand it. But you'll start to maximize this way because... It's not that you take advantage of people. That's not what we do here. But I am a capitalist, and I hope you guys are capitalists, and you're in the game to make money. And that's just the way the cookie crumbles. It's I'm out here as a man, and Bo is the other man on the phone, and he knows what he can or can't sell his house for, and I know what I can or can't buy it for. And if we come to an agreement as men or men and women, then you should be liable to understanding what you could have made or what you didn't. You should have been responsible to understand that yourself, and you agreed to me at the same time. Cool. We agreed and that's it. If you get upset later because you found out your, your buddy sold his house for X amount more, it doesn't matter. We already signed the deal, buddy. You didn't stand bold enough and you didn't negotiate hard enough to me to ask for a higher price. You just kept going down and down and I kept asking you. That's And it happens all the time. Hey, dude, my buddy just got the same car. How come his payment's 400 bucks? And same as that car. That's because he knew how to negotiate. It's fucked up, but that's just the truth. That guy, we didn't want to lose him either. So we knew we got him approved. Fuck it. We get 400 and we turned around and sold the same deal at the same term for 800 bucks on this fool over here because he didn't know how to do it. It's the way it works, man. We were, I was trained a little bit differently on the aggressive side, but now I try not to. I try to take the good stuff and show you guys, look, pay attention to this, sweeten everything out, right? You yeah. get in there with storytelling. It helps you out creating things and then using a bad guy in that scenario. Help you guys out a lot. Yeah. Well, it's helpful, man. I mean, I think the fact that he's willing to work with me makes a big, big difference to your point, right? You know, he's just staying in the conversation. And uh, um, so it's been a good learning experience, man. <laughs> yeah, man. So far. You're so going to learn a lot. I'll, probably, it's fun. It's I'll fun. probably have some more questions as we go. I actually do have a little bit more on the assignment side and the financing and everything, but I won't, I won't take all the time tonight. Maybe we can, you know, do a part two later this week yeah of course dude we can always get on a personal zoom i can record it for you and send okay. it over to you as well so we can cool. get that information mm -hmm. nice i appreciate it man thanks carlos thanks Bo, for introducing yourself man and thank yeah, you for you the you're getting congratulations yeah of course yeah thank you absolutely what up what up what up you guys ready to rock and roll do some deals some live calls
Let's do it. Let's do it. This is the funnest part of the day for me. Um, this is where I get excited. This is where it becomes a game for me. The game, nobody will ever talk about a sport or a field of work that they're in. They'll never refer it to a game unless you start start learning how to win the game, right? Nobody ever talked about losing, losing fucking game, like sport games or losing consistently on a video game or whatever and got happy about it. The people that you that you hear say, damn, this has now become a game to me. It's because they are now learning how to win the game. This is a game to me when I start calling. This is the fun part for me. Let's do this. So first deal we're going to go with is Duran. You have your deal, right? And yes, sir. Here we go. Okay. This is the calling. Yeah. Okay. Chrissy, she's the broker for it. Okay. So, okay, even perfect. So this is an agent outreach deal. Even perfect. I love talking to agents too. Um, okay, so let me get this address down. And this is Nashville or where's that? Yes, sir. 1814 Lillian Street. Tennessee. Nice, bro. I want to get in Nashville, bro. I want to get in Tennessee. It's one of my markets. I don't have anything there yet. I, I hope we can do this. So our name is Chrissy. <laughs> Okay, so seller needs six figures um, as a down payment. Okay. And purchase 60, price. 60K left on the mortgage. 60K mortgage. And uh, then turn, they want 480 purchase price. Yep. And they, they want down to 420. What up? Uh, they turned down 420. It's a good number. They should have went with it. I love 420. <laughs> <laughs> um okay so they want 480 they turn down 420 they will turn down 420 so i could bring that up to them 60k mortgage um we'll find out interest in piti right now and then um they need 100k plus down yeah. all right let me call this up everybody go on mute i'm gonna call this lady up she knows you as Dur uh duran right duran yeah all right cool Hey, what's up, Chrissy? This is Carlos. How you doing? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. Hey, thank thank you for your time. My, my buddy Duran, I work with him, and he had let me know that you have this property listed um, in Nashville off of Lillian Street. Just want to touch base yeah. with you really quick. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So he brought me up to speed. Let me know that the homeowners they want 480. That they've turned down an offer for for 420. And, and they've turned down an offer of 475. Oh, okay. So they're they firm. Want, okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, they're pretty firm at 480. And and you've really, you know, 480 like net offer even doesn't want any concessions at that. Got you. Cool. We're the type of people that can pay, you know, the market price. We can overpay things like that. As long as the terms make sense, meaning we can give, you know, purchase price, as long as some way we're making some type of money and the way as investors that we make our money this way, it's just in the cash flow. whatever I end up making payments to them just needs to be less than what we can rent it out for. And that's how we make money doing this. And it, so it's not impossible. I, I've locked up three deals in the last like 45 days with agents, Florida, two in Texas, and I'm looking to buy more. I've, I've learned this too, that a lot of the agents now are now shifting over here, learning a little bit more. Because I think that it is, um, it's slowed down for not only agents, but for us as investors to, to sell house, I mean, houses or to even like buy properties is just, uh, it's unstable. So I know that maybe the first half of the year did, we did pretty well. And this last half has been a little bit slower. So we started switching into this type of way that we buy, which is really cool because the homeowners are like this one, not really interested in taking a discount. Okay, cool. We can still make that term happen as long as we make some money with you. That's all it is. Sweet. Yeah, I would be curious. I know that he wants enough cash um, to for it to make sense. So he'd want like a pretty substantial down payment. I, I, I understood he needed like 100 grand plus, right? Probably, yeah. Okay. And I see I see on the note that it says 60,000 is remaining in the mortgage approximately, right? Yep. Do you know the interest and the payment to the principal interest tax insurance? 
I don't. Okay. So I kind of need to know that just so how I look at it is I look at market rent and I see how much that is. And then I see what the debt is, like how much they pay to that little 60 grand. And then I see the spread in between the debt to the market rent. And in there, there has to be a payment that goes to the seller's equity, which would be like 420,000. Um, and there has to be a payment that goes to that. And then um, a payment that goes to me every month. So then I, I make money as an investor, right? Yep. So um, like a rent to own or something like that to somebody else. I would, yeah. So this would be perched. I would buy in it kind of like if you, if you know, you're financing your own house right now, like you put your name on the deed, but maybe bank of America or whatever bank you're working with, um, you yeah. owe a debt to. So what happens yeah. is they become the bank to me and I own the property kind of like how you own your property. They don't actually, they're not, they're not landlords. So they don't have to take care of the property. Like if the roof needs to be replaced, they don't do anything. Does uh, title change names? The deed changes name. Yes. The deed. Okay. So it, it changes and then you do a substantial enough down payment to purchase it. So this is, this is where I have to look at it. Do you know by chance, since you're in that area, do you know what the market rent for a property like this is going for? Um, it might be like two grand, maybe. Okay. So I look at it like this. If it's 2000 and I need to put a hundred grand down me as an investor, 10% annually on 100 grand would be like 10,000, right? Mm -hmm. And so for that to make sense, um, I typically look for like a 12 plus percent return just to be upfront with you, okay? And mm -hmm. so if I'm putting 100 grand down, I need to be making, you know, 12, $15,000 net annually. So I don't know their payment. So I, what if their payment is a thousand bucks or 1200 bucks or 1400 bucks? And I can only make 600. And on top of that 600, I have to split some of that with the seller. That well, it the, won't work. If the deed changes names, though, that means his mortgage has been paid off. No, no, no. So um, if I'm buying it cash, like if I were to go buy this cash, would be easiest. The only way that I can buy it with the high interest rates right now to make it cash flow the right way, I would have to get a nice discount. So then it balances out the interest rate, which he's obviously standing firm. So that's not going to work. So this is... Um, there's two portions on how I buy this property. The 60 grand will be purchased subject to the existing mortgage. And I can send you some content on that. Being assumable? Like the existing mortgage being assumable? No, no, it's different. So assuming the loan is actually me applying my credit and going in and taking over the, the existing loan in the as-is state that it's in. with the, Whatever, how many years are left, I take it over okay. right there. Buying it subject to is just buying it, leaving the debt under the name of the homeowner and me being responsible to that portion, plus the, the, the everything else a part of the deal, like the rest of the equity. So so, indeed, it's, it, like if he still has a, like a, a mortgage on the property, I don't think he can change the name on title. No, no, he can. And I, I've done, I do this all the time. And I have a few agents if you need to talk to and vet as well. I did this recently a whole bunch of times. So it it's possible. It's just not everybody has just had this experience just yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, so, um, and typically the reasons okay. why we put our name on the deed is since we, we're owning it, like we do want to get the incentives, like writing it off and then for us to do certain things to it, like uh, renovate or certain, whatever I need to do to it, I need to have that control. Now he is, the sellers will be protected. Just like in a scenario, let's say that you're financing a car or your own house, your name will be on the deed of the property, though. Let's just use Bank of America. They're the ones that you're making payments to. Well, if you, you know, stop making payments, they end up foreclosing on you, right? Well, they're protected the same way. If we happen to give them money down at the close of escrow, we make some payments to them for, you know, let's this gave a worst case scenario right here, just so you can kind of see it out. Let's say I did, I did give them 100 grand down at this close. And then I did make some payments for like 12 months. And then I, maybe I got hit by a car or something where, and then I forgot to set up an auto pay where then I do, um, I, I, I mess up and I miss out on the, the mortgage payment one month. Well, instead of them having to like go through this full foreclosure process that can take time and money, um, we have this document, it's called a performance mortgage. And it states that in that scenario, if something like that were to happen to us, we we become the, the ones on the worst case scenario. And here's why. Because your seller would automatically keep all the money that we just gave them down. And then on top of that, they would have made we would have made each payment, continued making those payments and cash flow. 
the property would be deeded instantaneously back into their name. And then um, they would just have a decision to make, keep cash flowing or just resell it again. But we wouldn't want to um, make that mistake, right? Because I would be putting a lot of money and time into it. So here's a way that I would overcome it too, if it ever, ever came down to it. Because you want to, there's always risk involved as an investor. Um, I'll just simply just pull it from all the other deals I have. Um, just to, so I laid, I always lay down like the worst case scenarios because somewhere down the road, they might even have that question asked, asked, asked by them by a family member who's never heard of this. Like, oh, that sounds good. You're going to sell your house this way. So what happens if their tenant stops paying you? I don't want them to come and think that I avoided, avoided that. And, and so I lay it down up front, like, Hey, this is how you're protected. So there's like, you're really in the best case scenario right now. Okay. And I could send you um, some content on the difference of seller finance and subject to, and um, you yeah. know what, to make it easier, I can even send over some purchase sale agreements and that performance mortgage document to your email. So you can even show that to your sellers. And if they need it, they can take that to their real estate attorney or whatever lawyer, yeah. and then take a look at it and verify it, everything. Cool. I'll send you a credibility of who I am and all the deals I've purchased like this. Sweet. Yeah, he would definitely want to do that. And if, if A, he can get his price, B, get enough cash from the deal. Um, I mean, I think it's something worth considering. Absolutely. Um, that would help with the taxes too, not, to, not getting it as much up front. There are a lot of benefits to, uh, to that is like you said, the, the gains, they won't get all cash. So they won't have to pay gains on the other difference of what we give them down. Then it's it's still an investment to them. They're making they they're getting uh, payments every month. They manage more. If we were to give them cash and they only use a little bit and park the rest into the bank, what's the bank going to give you? Like you know, 0.9% on your money. And, and then with inflation so high, you're actually devaluing your dollar and let it sit there. If you leave it in the asset at the purchase price that we contracted it at, you'd actually make more money doing it this way, or she would, or whoever. Yeah, it's a guy. And okay. so if like what what does it look like in, in a payment to him that i i don't know because i don't know what you have if you could do me a favor and ask them what if maybe they have like a photo of their most recent mortgage statement that shows their exact remaining debt with their interest rate and the payment that covers the principal interest tax and insurance i'll be able to look at that and then you said market rents two grand and i'll be able to to, to sleep i mean you should do your own research on that i'm not positive it's a two bedroom one bath Okay. Well, I mean, I'm going to do my own research anyways. It's just, you know, if you're in the market, I just asked you um, just because you're right there. Um, but I, yeah. I typically do my own research right after. Um, but I'm just giving you an example. So we don't have to go too much into like number detail. Like if it was 2000 and if his payment was like 1200 bucks, I don't think I'd yeah. be able to give him a hundred grand because that 800 somehow I'd have to split that with him. And that would be a really low return for me. So it, let's yeah. just say his payment's only 800 bucks and now that's a larger spread. It might work. So that's kind of, we just need to figure that out if you can ask them that. So with the, the spread of the payment, you guys split that? So um, it just depends, right? Sometimes I'm like, hey, this doesn't really make sense for me to buy it. I mean, if I gave you that money down for the first year, um, me making payments to your equity, doesn't it hurts me more. It doesn't, it really yeah. like, uh, there are times where I don't make payments to the equity for a year or two and they agree to it because I'm like, hey, you either want more money down or if it's not so much money, I can give you a higher payment, but it has to be one or the other. So then I can make it make sense for me as well as an investor. And the reason why it works the majority of the time is the fact that we are giving them the price that they're looking for and we're not running away from that, you know, and a lot of homeowners right now are are not wanting to take that big discount because to them, their house is still worth the price that they see it to be. And that's just how we, but as investors and you as an agent, you now knowing that the market has changed, they don't see what we see. And so that's why we're conservative, but they still want the max. So this would be the way that we can do it, but we also have to make money. Totally. Well, yeah. I, um, do you have my email address? Do you, want, do you want me to text it to you? You can text it to me. This is my cell phone. Okay, cool. So I'll do that. And then, I mean, he received another offer today. Uh-huh. What was it at? 480. Okay. With 15 in concession. Okay. So he's, I hope he accepts it, but, you know. Yeah, that would be, if, that, if that's cash, that'd be his best bet to roll with that. Um, yeah. If, if not, you know, I'm, I'm here. Yeah. 
yeah so I'm, I'm trying to see if he will accept it um i haven't heard back yet but that i think is the absolute highest offer he's possibly going to get if anything if he wants anything more i think his only option is creative financing yeah like um i did i did buy a house like 30 grand over the, yeah. over the market price like last month in a downshifting market but that's because i was making like it was seller finance so there was no debt in place no no payments to any debt so I was able yeah. to split the, it was like 2,400 bucks. I was able to split 1,200 every month on my net and 1,200 of them. So that made it so juicy where I was like, yeah, yeah I can give you a lot more. Right. For right. right. Yeah. I want to say, I, I, I wish that this sounded like a good situation for this particular client, but I don't think there's going to be enough spread. Yeah. Me, me too. I don't know exactly either. So we're just going to have to find that out. Yeah. It's a thousand square foot house so um but if you i'll send you my my email address and i'm happy to look at it because if there's any other potential sellers who would be a good candidate for this i don't mind exploring it yeah yeah and um i'll i'll buy uh, properties with no equity which i just bought two of them it's scenarios where a homeowner just buys a house and needs to move i'll buy those yeah. from you and i'll pay the commissions because obviously they're going to lose if they sell it um, I can do foreclosures. I can do properties where the homeowners want too much for the house and nobody's willing to give it. So I can do all those other ones. And, and if you have any agents that, that are your friends that have properties similar where their sellers are not lowering it, represent me as the buyer and we'll go in and buy their properties too. And then do you only do like creative financing deals or do you ever buy them outright? Like we like do. More we do buy cash, um, but you know we, we're not paying full price since we know we're going to get six or eight percent at full at full price with with the market rates. So if this was like six months or a year ago, we can pay that full price and knowing that we're going to get like a two percent or three percent interest rate, which then allows us to make money every month on the market rent. But now when you when you add you know six percent and now doubles up that payment, which will then clear out. So the way we buy at cash is um, we just need a discount if we're going to buy a cash. So then it makes sense when we do get hit with a higher interest rate. Gotcha. Okay. Um, well, that's pretty helpful. I don't think I have any other deals right now that would be a good candidate for it. Just this one on Lillian, if he does not take this offer. Yeah, absolutely. Just, th just think of us, right? Duran and us. And you can always, you know, every once in a while, just let your sellers know, hey, and if you're not going to get the number you're looking for, we, we do have a buyer that does buy full price, sometimes over on terms. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, I'm going to text you my email address and I super appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time, Christy. Happy holidays. Bye. That's how you do agent outreach, guys. Any questions? Go. What up? beast just compliments that was awesome that wasn't even live that wasn't even a seller call was just an agent yeah but you turned you turned it into an agent outreach yeah um you saw how she was like oh you can't do this or you can't do that well i'm the educated one actually and so i said no you can no i actually have agents that can prove it to you i have contracts that do it no you can't no i'm not assuming it i'm doing it subject too the more educated you become on creative financing, the easier you're going to get to the end zone of this deal. The less educated you are and the less you can respond with confidence and information, the less you're going to make, right? That's the truth. Very true. Yeah, I told her I told her you were a wizard, so I think she knows that now. <laughs> I worked a deal with Annie at Brejo down here on Saturday with a broker on a commercial property, herself and the seller. Seller wanted market price. We went in. It was like almost he was almost battling me. I, why would I want to do creative finance? I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. This is like not even one of my resorts, not even my last resort. I just schooled him. I'm like, but aren't you a landlord? Yeah. I'm like, I mean, what do you, you need the cash up front, right? Yeah. I mean, so this wouldn't make sense. He goes, no, I'm not in it for cash flow. I'm like, that almost doesn't make sense, right? You're, you're a landlord for cash flow, right? He goes, yeah. I'm like, well, um, what happens if you don't get the price you're looking for then? Well, I'm just going to hold it. So then you're just going to cash flow it, right? I mean, dude, that just defeats the purpose. And then we went into, look, it, food for thought right here. If you were to lock this up for me today or sometime soon, I'm going to tell you the truth. 
you're going to get the highest purchase price you're going to see today than if you were to try to sell us in six months or eight months or nine. If we are in a recession, my buddy, my friend. We are going downwards. So here's the cool part. We add interest to that, right? You now make this a true investment and you see 855, but with this interest, I see 900 and like 80 something thousand dollars. So who's really winning when you're doing it this way and you're still making cash flow? And here's the other benefits. As a landlord, you probably had to go drive over there and touch up some of the themes and collect rents, right? Well, you no longer are that landlord. Roof, roof happens to collapse or anything. You don't have to be responsible for it. You make more money since you net more money. You don't have to put away 20% in case things break down. And I kept going over so many things and he wasn't open to it. And I felt like he was going to be open to it, even though he was like, no, 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 no. And then Annie calls me back. He's like, she was like, dude. He fucking wants to do it. And I was like, I told you. I told you that I gave him so much benefits and schooled him about the market going down and everything. Then I wasn't rude about it, but he just babbled me the whole time. He was in a car with his wife, his two kids just got out of football practice. So it was like, why would I need to do that? That's the worst case scenario for me. I would never do that. I just want cash. Okay, dude, well, then I'll give you a low number of cash so that my interest rate allows me to cash flow. That's what I can do for you. I'll do that for you. He ends up coming back. And even the broker calls Andy like, that was great. And then the seller calls the broker and was like, all right, let's do it. I didn't underwrite it last night. Annie Stan was a little bit out. He was out or something. And then I think later on tonight, we're underwriting it. So then tomorrow we can jump back on and see if we can close that deal. And I wish we recorded that, but the broker had it on his Zoom. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was awesome. Art, Carlos. Actually, the broker was like, I mean, what he was thinking, like you were, you were right. Like he was like, oh, if I don't sell it, I will just keep it and keep it like a cash flow. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. You're going to still doing cash flow and you're going to, you're not going to be the landlord anymore. So anyway, he say yes. So, um, yeah. And he called me today. I mean, I told him tomorrow we're going to send the, you know, the underwriting offer, but now he's very interested, you know, he was very Excited. opposed in the call. He was very opposed. I mean, maybe he, cause he wasn't, you know, like you say he was distracted or maybe like kind of like that that's what he was saying okay send me more information to my email but now he's open <laughs> good power of education i have um a couple more calls today and one of them is a builder that is open to three properties that he just built open to terms so not only do i do direct to seller or direct to agent this is going to be one time where I'm going to go in and I've done direct to wholesaler, direct to fix and flipper and bought in. I've, I just bought one from a, a general contractor. So I do everything at, uh, direct to whatever. Um, but now I'm going to do a direct to builder either today or tomorrow's call. If we get done with Dustin and Rigo's call or whoever's calls are next, um, then we can go and do this live call with the builder. I'm excited because I want to buy these brand new homes. Here's why. Brand new homes as a landlord. Right off the top, I'm going to get depreciation on maybe this high number. I mean, like tax incentives, right? I'm not going to gain any appreciation over the time, but I do get some tax incentives right off the bat. Here's another thing as a landlord. It's a brand new home. What can break? How much money can I really spend out of my pocket every single month if it's so new, right? A home that might need some renovation and things, things will start to break apart, fall apart, all these things. And I might have to save that 20%, which I'll still save it, but it doesn't mean I have to spend it. Um, and so in a brand new home, I got a 2021 build. Um, I got done when there was a guy in here named Roy that he left. I did it with him. I just um, dropped one in escrow today. The one that I posted on my Instagram that a 2022 year built four and a half percent, fourteen thousand four hundred dollars down. It was like a forty percent cash on cash return. Just bought that deal in Texas and one of the fastest growing zip codes in the nation. And it just becomes easier and easier because it's now becoming a game to me in this field that I do my work at. Hey, Carlos. I so mean. I'm glad I'm so glad you brought that up though because I just um uh well a friend of mine happens to work for a builder and they were talking about exactly what you're talking about right there that you know because um, I don't know if everybody's been aware of or if they've been like paying attention to the news though but um builders are in a big they're in a big crunch right now because they can't sell their inventory off so now it's kind of funny though but like um you know on a low low they're actually looking towards investors to help them offload their what do you call it offload their inventory so now that you brought that up and everything though 
bro, I could possibly bring exactly. I can bring them, bro. Right. So keep them coming, bro. Keep them coming. Keep me lined up, homie. And as soon as my team is lined up, I'll tell you I'm too busy. Here, pass it off to this person. Pass it off. Like Mason's taking stuff. Jesus is taking stuff. Ronnie and I just closed the deal. Mason and I are working the deal. Jesus and I closed the deal. We're working deals, right? I want to close with everybody in here. Just come in here and bring what you can. And if I'm not available, I can recommend the team that is getting prepared. My favorite quote, it's best to be prepared, not have an opportunity, and have an opportunity to arise and you not be prepared. I'll let you know this, that you can be prepared and don't have to have your own opportunity for that opportunity to arise. I can drop that. So be prepared, guys. A lot of opportunity. Bring me as much as you can, Dorian. I'm definitely down for these new properties. All right. I'm going to start bringing them then. Definitely going to start bringing them. Cool. Bring them. Cool. Um, cool. 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 I saw they're buying. Okay. So I got somebody to, somebody in sub two just text me saying, I, I locked up a deal. Do you want to buy it? You guys want to hear this phone call and get this information down, or I'll call it after this. It's basically me underwriting the deal, see if I want to buy it. If not, we call can call it now. Over. Yeah, call him. Can... Call him. Okay. Or call him. Can... Call him. <laughs> call him. We can roll into. All right, fuck it. Let's just do it, so you guys can see how I can look at it real quick. It keeps us spontaneous. Call it. <laughs> All right, everybody, on mute, please. Hello? What's up, champ? It's Carlos. Hey, Carlos. How are you doing, man? Man, I am fantastic. How about yourself, brother? I'm doing great. Doing great. Doing some marketing for uh, sub two deals. I uh, uh, I believe. Did you receive my tax? I did. That's actually how I got your number, so I can call you back. Um, I saw that right. So I, I'm reading. I saw that you're buying creative deals. I have a deal in Newark, Ohio. Would you be interested to hear? Absolutely. I actually have a partner that lives in, in uh, New Philadelphia, Ohio, um, not too far from oh, okay. Cleveland, like maybe like 30 minutes from Cleveland or, or maybe maybe like an hour. I don't know. Nice, man. Um, so this one is uh, subject to, um, um, I, I believe I have your email from, from sub two or from the post that you post. Mm -hmm. And I can just send the, the detail. What details? Yeah, go ahead and send it to me. And what other details um, can you just verbalize for me? Are you um, yeah. you're in a seven one four area code? Are you in Orange County? Yeah, I'm in Orange County. Oh, um, my man, I'm you're in, in LA, Springs. right? What was that? I'm in Palm Springs. Palm Springs. I love Palm Springs. Yeah, bro. I have a whole I bunch love. of friends that work out of in Orange County. A whole bunch of people. Orange County. Um, I believe that uh, Mitch Roy lives in this area. Yeah. Um. Christian Hernandez. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, Richard actually, Cole, maybe he's in Mark. Yeah, Chain, Mark Chain's there. there. There are a lot of people in that area. A lot of my friends that are wholesalers. They're not creative financiers. They're there too. I I used to go a lot out there. I have family in Santa Ana, so I love it. I used to go, I used to go to the block in Orange all the time. Yes, I I mean I love loving here, uh, living here. Uh, it's just that the uh, you know it's not really rental friendly and not uh <laughs> yeah, yeah, airbnb friendly so yeah, it's, it's kind of suck trying to invest here but yeah. uh that, that's totally fine <laughs> that's why i go virtual you know um <laughs> uh, but but yeah it's um i'm actually talking to uh another guy trying to buy a Huntington beach house um subject to va loan so pretty sweet um that's so awesome. that they can't you can't do Airbnb, so that's that's the only thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I like short-term rentals too, but it's it's hectic in some places, too many rules. What about right, this one? Right. So what's going on with this one? What do you what can you do? Yeah. Um I just send the the do uh the detail to Ruiz uh real estate 20 at Gmail. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um so this one um so let me start from the uh, subject two. Okay, so subject subject two balance um, is it is a conventional loan. Balance is um, about eighty five thousand, um, three point five uh, interest rate. Um, seller bought it last year, so he does not, doesn't really have much equity. Um, um, and oh, actually, oh um, yeah, maybe he doesn't have any equity. Um, 
PITI is 746. Hey, what? Uh, 746. That's a PITI? PITI, okay. yes. 746, okay. Okay. Uh, REN I have is uh, 1500. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I in the in the email, um, I also have uh, rental comps, and you can take a look at that. Okay. Um, then do 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 three bed one bath sixteen ninety square feet ten thousand uh, almost some eleven thousand square lot. Okay. And sixty one built. Okay. Uh, a nice so a nice square uh foot lots a nice um size home. Yeah, it's actually one of the biggest one in that area. I can't really find any comps that have the same uh, same size and same square lot. The closest one um, is 1,100 square feet, um, 5,000 square lot, three bed, one bed. And uh, it was sold for 144 back in June. So I assume if you want to flip it, um, it, Are you the it, home run, home run, uh, home run deals? Home run deals, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just brought it up. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And um, we have photos on this thing? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So the entry fee for someone like me that includes your assignment, the money down, what is that uh -huh. total? So then I can plug in the closing costs and everything else. Um, so that's that's one thing that I really don't want to put in because this one needs some work. This one needs a new roof, and it, it has a leak on the left side of the living room. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's that's being virtual. Um, I just learned that to not estimate that and just let the buyer estimate themselves. Mm -hmm. But if I had to guess, was that? No, I said I got you. I hear you. Yeah, um, but um, the 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 number that I put in the cash to close that's including the arrear and the wholesale fee. Um, so the so 15, that's the about fifteen grand total is money to them if there is any arrears and a wholesale fee, right? Right, right. So that's the whole cost for you to close, and then you you can uh, include the closing the closing cost, which I think is about like two thousand. Okay. Um, and um, rehab with the roof maybe about like another 30 30 to 40 thousand I'm, I'm not really sure um right, right. okay yeah cool, cool. so for this one if you want to walk it i can arrange that too but because this one has a roof that needs to be fixed and um it's kind of hard to try to um to get more photos because uh, the seller has to be there so i was like okay let's just just keep it as uh, cash to close, and then you can just take a look and see if the rehab makes sense. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, let, I'll take a look at those photos so I can kind of analyze what the the, um, the cost of the roof or whatever that leak is. And mm -hmm. the so far, fifteen grand plus the two k and everything that's cool and all. Let's let's figure out. Um, hey, Ace, come here. Sorry about that. Um, no worry. Um, and then let's figure out the, I'm going to see what, what more or less the, um, the cost of like renovation will be. And then I'll plug those in because there's, there's like a 700 plus, um, cash flow, like a net cash flow from 746 to 1500. So I got to just put all the numbers out and see what the return will be. And we can go, from uh -huh. there. we can go from there. Yeah. Sure, man. Cool. Cool. So, um, and then you did say on the email, the photos were there, right? Yeah, so um, it is um, a industrial lift link. So if you have an account, you can, you can just log in and, and click for the address uh, and see all of the photos. Um, but I can send you the uh, the address too if you don't want to lock it. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't have a login to like Investor Lift, so I mean, just send me send me uh, I guess sure, photos man. on it, and that'll help me out. Sure. Look at it, and I'll get back to you a little bit later. Okay. Sure, man. Um, anything else you want to know about this, this property in, in terms of, uh, you know, anything else? No, typically that's all I need. And I do all my own research about everything else. Right. Okay. Yeah. No worry, man. Uh, this one right now it is vacant, uh, uh, tenants just moved out. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, it used to be a rental and, and yeah, and low is a conventional. Okay. And add that all down right there. Okay. Yeah.
Cool, man. Cool. Appreciate it. Thanks for thinking of me. Yeah, you have anything else to yeah, send this way? And then I'll underwrite this and look at it a little bit later, okay? Yeah, man. Um, I do have another one, um, um, but this one is in Texas, uh, Odessa. I'm not sure if that's one of the, your area that you would like to look at. And also, it's a mobile home. So I'm not sure if that's going to Cool. Be, I'm the guy for Texas and mobile homes. I'm still cool with them. Um, so, yeah, yeah. What's, what's going on? Yeah, just send me, that, send me that opportunity then. I'll take a look at that one. Um, let me brief you on that one too. And okay. see. This one, this one is a mobile home, mm -hmm. uh, three bed, two and a half baths, 1400 square feet. Um, it's, it, it sit on a one acre, okay. um, and 2017 built. So it's pretty new, um, mobile home, uh, to do it is in foreclosure, but no auction date, uh, yet, um, Balance, it, it is also a conventional loan. Okay. Um, balance is 115. Interest is 4.2. And TITI is uh, 1300 square, uh, sorry, 1300 uh, dollar. Okay, roughly 1300. Uh, and do uh, you know how many arrears or how many months or how much the arrears are? Yeah, so uh, I, I know the whole cash to close is 27. Uh, the arrear, I believe, uh, the arrear is about 5000 Okay. Yeah. And that uh, included on the 27000 entry fee? Yes, uh, including the cash to seller, uh, arrear, and the wholesale fee. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, and this one, um, this one, so the the subject to balance is uh, one fifteen. Mm -hmm. So the cash to close is about twenty seven. Mm -hmm. It does need some cosmetic rehab, mainly um, cosmetic stuff inside. Um, so let's put in like ten grand for rehab. Uh, the nice thing about this one is um, the ARV is one eighty five. Mm -hmm. um, I I do have a comms that just so on. 30th of uh, November, November 30th. Mm -hmm. So that's like last week. And it was sold for 185. Okay. Uh, same square feet, same square lot in my, uh, 2019 built. So, um, what's what city was this in again? Which city? This is uh, Odessa. Odessa. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, Odessa, Texas. Cool. Yeah. So, the population and everything and, and whatnot a little bit. Yeah. Population, I think, is one fit, uh, 150,000. Nice. Big for big. for the county. Okay. Uh, both Midland and Dessa. Um, so this one, if you fix it up, uh, you will have a nice, you know, spread on the equity because this one is low enough. Um, the balance is low enough. Um, so yeah, and then I do have all of the photos there too, so you can take a look. Um, and, and yeah, that's the story of this one. Um, this one, I believe that the PICI is pretty high in, in terms of, um, you know, in terms of comparing the rent. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, it, it can be a nice wrap. The rent, the closest rent I can find is, uh, 1800, um, per month, uh, -huh. uh for long-term rental, it might be a little bit too, um, too tight um so that's why i'm saying wrap might be better and uh you know you're not do you know do there. you know if the property is movable um or is it real property um is it movable uh nice uh that's a good question uh i will have to find that out okay um just because uh, um some lenders won't lend me on mobile homes that are that are not real property and then uh -huh. movable. So it just depends. I have to look at that. And then are they renting land or they own the land? They own the land. Oh, actually, yeah, they have a loan. They have a conventional loan. So I, I assume that it shouldn't be movable because they, they got a loan, right? Um, yeah, but movable could be like, you know, I could pick up this this mobile home and move it. If it's fixed, if it's fixed into the like a foundation and everything, then, oh, oh, then it, can be, it can be deemed as like a real property if they deem it. So it does, that's kind of what I need to find out. So then I know either I if I'm going to use a lender or going to try to find like a rap buyer to do it. And yes, I would look at I it think. as a rap, like how you said. I see. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me find that information for you. Okay, man. Thanks so much, Victor. Yeah, no problem.
Let me know. Is your last name Nguyen, so I say the number? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, my last name is Nguyen. Okay, cool. Gotcha, man. Yeah, um, let me send you the email on that one. So you have both too, okay? Sweet, bro. Thank you so much. No problem, man. Talk to you later, okay? Talk to you. Bye. All right, bye-bye. Um, yeah, so there's that. So I'll look at those deals. The first one doesn't sound too enticing anymore because the rehab cat the rehab costs, but right off the rip, it sounded cool at first. It's just fifteen thousand um, dollars plus the, the closing cost to make seven fifty for a month. It's a pretty good deal right there. Then he hit me with thirty to forty grand for a renovation. I'm like, ah, oh, there we go. There that took that out. <laughs> But the rehab one, I mean, the mobile home one, I could charge a lot more on the interest rate and the payment, and I can get money down um, towards the entry fee. So that one's a little bit more enticing for me to look at, but I got to do my own research and check them all out. All right. We'll move into... Uh, Out of... uh... What up? All right. Here we go. All right, Rigo, you sent me something? Yeah, I sent one over. Um, this one, they currently have it as a rental property. Um, they're looking to sell it to get a, you know, another one because I guess they're interested in getting a second rental. Well, sell this one and get another one. Uh, so I pitched terms at her uh, once she gave me a number. And she says it'd be something uh, she'd be interested in. And she's going to talk to her husband. And I just told her I'd follow up. Um, but... Uh, yeah, she just told me to give her a call back, um, you know, after they spoke about it, which I talked to her on Friday. Okay, so wife's name is Betty. Okay, so Betty. Yeah, and... so it was a woman. Um, so the name on there when I called, uh, I thought it was the husband, but the wife ended up picking up. So I guess they're, they're partners in their business. So um, she sounded pretty, uh, like, she, you know, she knew pretty well, like much about it. So even Even better. The, that's yeah. the the more they know the more experienced they are the faster we can make this happen or the faster we can not make it happen you know yeah definitely um arv is 450 but they want 500 ah these investors yeah. huh yeah the, those ones huh all right cool <laughs> now i know um let's see would you be interested in cash offer our estimate is this Cool, 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 cool and so all i'm doing is giving them a phone call breaking down what what i can do on terms yeah, basically. Cool, man. Let me go ahead and look this up real quick. What is this, Andrew? Okay, I got it. Anybody have any questions on anything before I, I dial this number? You guys learning a lot? Yeah, Carlos, Great time. thank you. A lot. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm ready to take notes. Do this. It's I'm taking notes yes. also. <laughs> it's recorded. I'll post this up on my YouTube as well, besides the, the program. Certain ones I, when we start I got no time to watch recordings. <laughs> Dude, me too. It's, it's it good is, to be man. live. Yeah. <laughs> me too. Good to be live. Um, cool, Rio. So I'm taking a look at this property real quick. The the photos that are on the Zillow, those are current or no? Rigo, you there? Take a look at it, but it sounds like it, yeah. It looks okay. uh outdated for sure it looks yeah it, it looks dated it doesn't look beat yeah. up but back here looks pretty cool um but landscaping could probably be a little bit nicer the inside the cabinets of the kitchen the restroom if that is the photos yeah it's dated for, for these guys to want to get this sold um for sure we're gonna go in there i'm gonna work it um so let me go ahead and call up this lady and and just run through this okay and, and regal or robert this time it was Rico. I just started telling people Rico. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You wouldn't even understand the people are on like, yo, I'm calling on behalf of this person. Who the fuck is that? My you just spoke to him. Oh, you mean Charles? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I work with so many people and then I call him, but hey, motherfucker, did you say your name was Charles? Yeah. Why the fuck didn't you tell me that? <laughs> All right, cool. So Rigo. Everybody on mute. I'm gonna call up either Betty or, or Rod. All right, here we go. 
Hi, this is Betty. I'm not available. Hi, this is Betty. I'm not available to take the call. If this is Kaiser, will you please call back? Or... All right, that's a follow up. Is that where all your secrets come from? That book right there? No, this is the first time I read this book. Jesus, why did I not read this one earlier? What is it? Who is it by? Joshua Weiss. Joshua Weiss. Oh. Check it out. The Real oh, World cool. Negotiation. This What's it about? It talks about negotiations that go around nationwide. I was talking to Ambi about this last night. And um, and the, what's really cool about it is it goes into depth about how these work. And they have one where like they go over deals that weren't theirs, but uh, like basically they go over a whole deal that happened in, from international companies to companies within the same uh, states. And then like, Hot people deals that had to do with hostages deals that had to do with drug traffickers that were negotiating with the government and they talk about how to look at the mindset and they started breaking down yeah typically like when negotiating with like koreans or or like i forgot asians or something that it typically likes to build rapport before doing some of these things and they broke down like how to look at stuff like when you talk when you when you negotiate with human lives at stake it's a different type of conversation you can't make mistakes but at the same time you can't negotiate with criminals and they basically break down how to look at shit when you when you negotiate in different aspects like saying look if you don't have really good deal and it's it's turning shitty and you have a really good relationship with this people these people you can learn to do you can learn to save the deal because of the relationship you learn how to build then they even talk about how you have a great deal, but a shitty relationship. And because you have a shitty relationship, it'll fuck up the deal. And they keep breaking down like the psychology of when looking at working at different deals of like what the behind the scenes, how to look at the broad spectrum. And I'm like, dude, this is insane. Like I, 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 um, I read in here, like one about like the Colombian fucking cartel, like traffic, trafficking drugs and shit and talking about like, how at some point they they like distributed 90% of the world's cocaine and like how they had to have a, a negotiation with the government. And they even talk about how many fucking people um were were on the team of this cartel. Like, oh, then they they dropped down to 7,000 members. And I'm like, damn, this is what's up, homie. This is some raw life shit right here. I love it. Good ass book for you guys to read. You read Never Split the Difference. Yeah, I was one of the first one. That was badass. Chris Boss is gangster, homie. The way he broke it down to me, I'm like, damn, a motherfucker's bad. And that's that's a hard that's a hard gig right there to negotiate people's lives and shit. Yeah, that's fucking stressful. Great book, recommend it for everybody. Which one would you read first out of those two? Like for everybody in here who hasn't read either, go with Chris Boss. Chris Boss is just a badass, but um, go with this. So you you hear his understanding because it is. It is over the negotiation at the highest level with highest stakes, but it's the whole book is about that. This one is going to give you several different scenarios with different stories. Go and learn the Chris Boss one first, and then this one. You're talking about Chris Boss, um, the um, the FBI negotiator. Yeah, the hostage negotiator. Yeah, yeah, he's got um. If you, um, I don't know if anybody's like familiar with it though, but um. There's a website called Masterclass. 
and then he actually he actually um he actually um has um, a video master class where he teaches all that. Yeah, stay you, know, you know, stay stay up to par on you guys' sales training, right? If you want to be a badass in sales, if you don't, you know, don't don't have to read about other stuff. Me, I constantly read, so I stay fresh and prepared. Besides live training with you guys, I'm prepared at any fucking moment. And it, what I don't know, I have a team to help me out. And what I don't know, I can find out in books later on. Me being bold, I'll go the distance no matter what. But I stay prepared and I stay trained. I've never done this as consistent as, consistent as I am now, but I look at it as a sport. I want to be the best. I got to beat the best. I got to do things at the best. If I want to be the best, I got. I also got to mimic what they do. And how can I outperform that? Like right now, I'm on my last um, phase of my disciplinary action. I'm five days and haven't had a bite of food. Fasting. I'm liquid diets right now. Kombucha, carrot juices, uh, spinach juices, waters. And I'm still working out twice a day. And I'm still losing weight. I'm the lightest I've ever been since junior year. I'm almost 30. I was 215 in the beginning of the year. I'm 162 pounds right now, right? On top of that, all the other things you guys know about my background, the reason why I say it's hard for people to outperform me is because this year was an evolution spiritually, physically, mentally, health-wise, all of that. I made a catapult jump. I didn't just, oh, I came in and made a name in real estate. That was one thing. I came out here and made it mentally. I came out here and made it emotionally, turned around financially. And now I'm even doing it on my health as well. Dramatic. I lost like 50 something pounds already. 54 pounds since January. What, homie? Nice. <laughs> That's why I'm confident. I'm to I got you beat, Carlo. I work fucking hard. That's why. I lost 125 since January. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't have that. I would fucking be like, I'd vanish if I lost that. Good job, man. That's that's a lot. That's hard dedication, man. Hard work. Proud of you, man. Congratulations, hard work Larry. all around, man. Hard work all around. That's where it's at. Darwin, uh, Darwin, where what is the website? It's called Masterclass. If you type in, if you go, if you go on Google and type in Masterclass, and then, um, like he said, Chris. And then his last name is um, B as a Victor O S S. It'll pop up. Okay, thank you. No problem. Thanks, Carlos. No problem. All right, I'm gonna call. So Rigo, we'll just follow up with that one. I am gonna call Dustin's lead real quick, or is it Aaron's lead? Let's see. Submitted. Okay, cool. This is Ren. Give me one second while I read the notes real quick, guys. And 208. Is that is that the um Idaho zip code or no? Six two nine six four five zero. Okay. Seller currently has tenants, would like to sell it with them in place. Their lease does not expire until August 23rd, would like 10% down payments. Okay, cool. So they want 479 grand and so, okay, it's currently rented, would like to sell with tenants in place. Okay, rented, want to sell to sell with tenants in place. Ace, settle down, boy. Uh, like to sell them in place. Lease doesn't expire till, oh, okay. So a whole year, basically. Lease expires. Uh, A23. Okay, babe, thank you. Um, 10% down. Okay, cool. Let's get ready to rock and roll. I love it. I wish I had more time all day. Once I automate everything, I want to be doing like calls with you guys like eight hours a day. How many deals I'd block up in a day if I had eight hours to call? Oh my gosh. I'd be true champion. Cool. That's a pretty nice house. Cool. 
Here you go. Let me call them up. Can you guys hear my dogs eating in the background? They're like fucking pigs or no? Can you guys kind of hear them? I got too much going on in my background to hear your background noise. I can't hear nothing. <laughs> Good, because I have a whole bunch of French bulldogs in here and it's dinner time. And they're all in my office and I can just, this is all I hear because they're, they're micro and they're small. I hear is... <laughs> I thought that eating. was you breathing, bro. For real? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was gonna say, dude, I just told you I lost all this weight. <laughs> Carlos, hungry for the for the deals. The hungriest person, dude. You know how hungry I am? I just told you guys five. I'm five days in without eating food. <laughs> you you look in. you look thinner. I in like your arms and your shoulders a little bit. I can tell you've lost weight just from when I first started. Yeah, for sure. sure. Sure, been, been on, yeah, on. yeah, you get you get what I call vegan neck when your neck gets real small. <laughs> yeah, he has that vegan swag. Like you look at him and say he's vegan. Yeah, well, <laughs> vegans don't wear leather. I'm dressed up in leather, drip down with leather shoes and leather, and they can hate me. I'm not true vegan at heart. I oh. like fucking other meats and things. I just discipline myself. I am you not a vegan. Show up and in I leather never will be. Hey, I wear yeah. leather, everything, and fur oh. on me. Mink fur oh. so they can get pissed at me. <laughs> I do not care. <laughs> ah, okay, cool. So let me see. I contact you because I wanted to get on that. Uh, okay, nice. Somebody just hit me up with another deal. We'll work that one tomorrow. Oh, they already worked it for me. Sweet. I love it. This is why you guys want to be closers because people will constantly call you. People will always want you to work their deals. While I'm working deals, I get random people to try to sell me deals. I got another person that I don't even know said, hey, somebody told me that you're pretty good at what you're doing. I have a property in Orlando. Don't know how to look at it. This is where we are. This is what we reduce it to. Do you think you can jump on the phone? Love shit like that. It never stops. Become closer. You guys would never stop having all the deals. It'll be infinite amount of deals. No money out of pocket. They just start coming to you. They drop on your lap. Amazing feeling. It's an amazing feeling. And um, Dustin, it it I just looked on the link that you sent me. Did yeah, just look up the copy paste the address. The link is uh, just a nearby comp submission. Oh, ha <laughs> ha! I'm like looking at it. So let me then get it. Five eight zero eight. Oh yeah, Hunter. I'm not sure if I even told you this. Hunter is going to be doing a weekly um unapologetic call over yeah. the sheet that i told you about the uh creative uh comp sheet as well as just live comping he's gonna be doing that every single week on wednesday and powerhouse wow. obviously by uh you know proxy um so it's gonna be all you are all powerhouse are invited out to that so it's every wednesday where he's gonna be coming in with him and another appraiser doing comping and comp training what time? Uh, starting right now, 2.30 Pacific Standard, I think. Say that again. What time? Uh, I'm pretty sure 2.30 Pacific Standard or 2.30, 2.30 Mountain Time, actually, yeah. So 1.30. Oh, so 1, 1 p.m. Pacific. 1.30 p.m. Pacific time. Till what time? One hour? Yeah, an hour. You're the best, guys. We'll, we'll get you guys that link. Um, okay, cool. So... I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go and call Ren real quick and we're going to see what's up. I brought up the address, seeing when it's sold. Um, let's, let's do this. All right. Here we go. Everybody, every, everybody able to hear the, uh, the calls pretty clearly. I have the microphone set next to it, but are you guys able to hear the, the sellers respond and everything? Yeah, you're good. Okay. That's all I want to make sure. Here we go. Everybody back on mute. Hurry up and finish up eating, guys. Make some fucking loud. Stop it. Hello. Hey, what's up, Ren? How you doing? This is Carlos. Carlos, how you doing? Man, I'm fantastic. Thank you so much for answering this call. You had a uh, you had spoken with my buddy Aaron about this property that that uh you have off of what is it, West Battlement Court in Boise? Correct. Yeah. Is that the guy I talked to yesterday? 
I believe so. Yes. He spoke yeah. to you and, and um, he basically gave me some notes said that um, you want a purchase price of 479 with 10% down. And it's currently rented with the yes. lease in place until August of 23. And you'd like to sell it with the tenants, correct? Correct. Okay, cool. Um, let me ask you this real quick with the tenants in place. What are they currently paying? 1800 a month. Okay, 1800 a month, and they're locked in for a year on that. And the, the is there any debt left in place? Do you have a mortgage on this property? No. No, okay, cool, cool. So you're netting 1800 bucks then, right? Correct. Okay. So this is this is typically how, how we do purchase properties, um, especially right now with, with this market being a little unstable. And it's, I'm glad that you said that it is free and clear because there's opportunity for me to make money in there as well. The way that I make money in this is kind of like how you are. Um, it, so just whatever the payment that I can agree with you, it just needs to be enough for me to eat. So an example, if you want 10%, that's 47,000. Um, what, what is, you know, if that 1800 bucks out of there, sorry about that. Give me one second. Hey guys, I have my dogs with me. Yeah, hey, sir. come here. That's enough. Ace. Sorry about that once again. Um, with forty seven thousand, like roughly forty eight thousand dollars down. Right. The way I make money in this is I look at a cash on cash return. What am I going to net every month on this? And I'd like to ask you. You know, um, what do you think would be a fair number? Knowing that they're paying eighteen hundred, and knowing I need to make money every month, what do you think would be a fair number for me to pay you? Are you well? Are you planning on getting a bank note, or you want to carry it through me? Oh, that, that was my understanding that you um, you are carrying it since I've seen the 10% oh, okay. down. Okay, yeah. I, it just, well, I guess, why don't you, let me give you my email address and you send me an email and then I'll prepare a little proposal for you on what I think it should be. Like, if you're going to carry it for 30 years at whatever percentage, then I can prepare up a payment and you can take over the tenants and we can drop it up and go from there. Yeah, so I buy, actually I buy a lot of properties right now like this. What happened is a lot of homeowners want market price and some people are not ready to take a discount. And so the way I've been able to do it is buying it this way. It's not that I can't buy it cash using my own banks. It's just that when I go buy market price, then get hit with that high interest, that's what's yeah. going to hurt my monthly payment and that will kill a deal. So I found it a lot easier um, to be able to just to, to work that out with the homeowner and them finance me. Yeah, I don't. I'm not interested in charging the market interest right now because it's it's inflated. So, the, right. um, but if you're going to carry it through me, there will be. I mean, it's there's going to be interest charges. So absolutely, man. I want this to be a true investment for you. I'm I'm not here to hassle yeah. you or, or lowball you. I mean, I used to yeah. do it all the time with cash, but as long as the am is cool. So, like, let's say here's an example. There was a home that was free and clear in Florida. I'm buying this one right now. Purchase price is 420. It's market. It's market ready. Um, no tenants in it. Homeowner is the same thing. You want a 10% down, free and clear. And I said, oh, what's the market rent? 24. And I said, so um, we, he said, can you run the numbers on a 30-year AM at 4%? And Because yeah. he first said 6. And I told him, I mean, I can get 6. What's the interest rate today? It came down just a little bit. So I can probably get like a six, six and a half. And so I'm not opposed to not paying you a, like well, six. So so yeah. here, here's how I look at it. Six and tell me what that comes out at. And then we'll go from there. So here's the thing. If I'm able to give you that 6%, right? And then make the price make sense. Are you cool with, with a like if I were to push the term out, even though I might not, let's say, Maybe I put like 40, 50 years on the actual term amount, and then I may be making these payments to you for 10, 15 years. That will actually allow me to make a better payment when I do it that way. And that's exactly what I did in the Florida one where he wanted- So you want 40 year amortization is what you want. I just did one at 55 for a 10 year term. I did a, a I'm actually paying this for 10 years on a, and I balloon them out in 10 years. But to okay. make me enough money to make sense with that money down in interest, I need that 55 years. So then my payment was low enough which he okay, so your, your, your friend took my email yesterday. Okay. Okay. So send me your proposal and then we'll go from there, but I'm, I'm game. So. 
Cool, man. I'm, I'm definitely game with you, man. So, I mean, is that what you prefer to do or would you rather just hash this out on the phone? Just send me a proposal. We're good. I just want to see what the numbers come out to be so that uh, if, you know, I take a 10% down, then I can, uh, you know, it, we'll see where it pans out and then you want to balloon it in 10, right? Yeah. What That also depends on like, if you want to make more interest over time, I like to go the longest, obviously, but yeah, yeah. right now I'm not we'll doing anything. For it. In 10. I'm good with that. So. Okay. And, 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 and is um 10%, is that the, the, like the minimum or is there a little bit, yeah. do you need that much money? That's the, that's the minimum. Is there a certain reason you need, you need to buy something right now, or is it more like a concern or. I No, that's, I'm, I would probably just stash that. So that's the minimum though. That's where I'm at with it. I'm not going to do 5%. Cool. So I did, I had that thing sold with a lease option, non-refundable lease option. And those people walked and then I got those tenants in there. Nice. And so I just want to know that you're serious. So yeah, I, we, I so we do, unfair. we do have this thing too. Is, um, we have like a performance mortgage uh, that we've drafted and we, we had our legal team help us out. And basically what it is, is, because we had homeowners ask us for 20. And I said, is there a reason you need that much? And they're like, well, we want your skin in the game. We're going to do 10. It's, it, that's non-negotiable. Okay. That's why I needed to know. I just needed to know yeah. if it was negotiable or not. Yeah. Let me do that. I have, I'll have your email and I'll go with the numbers given. I'll underwrite it, see what, what I can do on, on the AM. And I'll, I'll send it over to you at, at um, something that makes sense yeah, for me as well. Rand at atdlawnservice.com. Say that again. Rand at atdlawnservice.com. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Have a good day. You too. Bye. I got did not want to be on the phone. Businessman. Yeah. Or he's just, you know, he hears another businessman on the phone. Who knows? One the That's other. what it felt like. You That's, felt it, right? phone, That's what it felt like. <laughs> I'm just trying to get him. Look, he had the time, but he was trying to get me off. And I was trying to figure out a, a way to keep him on the phone without being aggressive, but I couldn't do it where i was at so i'm still open to it but here's the thing he wants six percent i'm going to make that negotiable or i'm going to drop the purchase price so i'm going to hit him like how he wants me to hit him with some stuff but i'm going to also sweeten it for me i'm going to make the term even if it, even if the six percent's on there i'm going to make the term like long enough over 10 years when my payment is healthy you get me because 10 percent, 50 grand right if he's making nine if he's making 1800 right now and I were to say let me give you 900 or maybe a little bit less right and let me make the other 900 well, you, you annualize that 900. Where's my calculator? I mean, you times that by 12. And uh, let's see, you get 10,800, right? Well, that off the bat is 20% right off the bat. I'll get the grand down. That right there is a deal for somebody, right? Boom, right off the rip, right? So what if I went and took that shit to like 50, 60 year am and allowed me to make a little bit more change, right? That's how we had to look at it. This guy was up front. He was real, real... Mm, you know, not aggressive or anything. It was just the way he was. You guys heard it. I don't think that. Uh, Straight shooter. I don't think that he won't avoid us. Uh, reason he had a lease option in place. They didn't execute. Just rented it out. He ain't going to get this purchase price. No matter how firm he is, non-negotiable. We'll see, right? Remember how I told you guys that you're going to hear these no's up front and everything? We'll see. We'll see because here's the real thing. He doesn't have to sell it. He's cash flowing. It's free and clear. He's making 1800 a pop times that by 12. He's making some change every year on it. But here's the thing. Does he want to sell it to me at 479 at 6% over 10, 20 years and make, let me go ahead and plug that in so you guys can see when I break shit down. That's why I want him on the phone. So I could have then educated him on, we would have went back and forth, but we would have got it down. So at 479, let's see, minus a 479,000. And you take away 47, uh, 900, you're left with $431,000. And I do a, a 55 year M at 6%. That interest rate is too high. It has to be 4%. Let's see. It's still too high. Okay. I, was even, I, was thinking four, I was thinking about 4%. Four, four yeah, yeah. Um, even still too high. I have to go like fucking 75 years at 4%. Damn, still too high. We need 3%. Can you, can you split that? Can you can you um split that um interest payment to where it you know what do you call it? Um that you can have like um like uh three percent over five years 
and then have it. Oh, yeah, it it's called it's gradual it. interest or gradual payments. But I'm thinking like maybe I can give him a higher number than he's looking for, reduce the interest, and say, hey, if at any moment I decided that I wanted to sell this before our term, at least you get that higher purchase price because you wouldn't make the remaining interest on the term that I didn't go with. So you at least lock in a higher price and get that cleared out, right? So there are ways to then go back and forth on this. That's why I like on the phone because of emails and take time back and forth, all these types of things. For this to make sense at the current, like current rate, if you want 6%, literally, I got to go, let's see, what is 100 years? <laughs> 100 years. Fuck, it's still <laughs> That still doesn't make sense. It's, it's, it, but pay, at 100 years, at 431,000, at 100 year term at 6%, the payment's 2160. It's $400 over. So, actually, me bringing this up to him, he's going to actually read this and see I can't buy it. So, he's going to work with me on that interest rate. No matter what. Well, he I'm did say tonight. on the call, he's like, I'm not looking to charge in, like market interest because it's inflated. Yeah, but the six percent doesn't let me cash flow at all. Even at a hundred, dude, I, I put in the the ten percent down. A hundred year term at six percent, my payment is two thousand one hundred. Market rent is eighteen hundred, and even oh, yeah. if it's not, he's locked up for the next year at eighteen hundred. I can't change. Well, that's it. what I was saying. He said he's not looking to charge market interest right. because it's inflated. So yeah, it's negotiable. What if I gave him? What if I gave him five hundred rand? Let me see. I'm just trying to give you guys ideas how to look at it. And I hit him with like, if I got 3%, if I did that at a hundred year term of payment, it'd still be 1300, it'd still be a lot. Let me shit, let me see it. Two and a half percent at this thing. Yeah, let's go back to four to seven. No, fuck that. I give him an extra. I can do nothing. Um, okay. Let's go down four, four, four. I would need it. Literally like a hundred year term. I'm not even lying to you. I have to go over a hundred years for this to make sense. At, even at 4%, it, it's too high of a payment. It's 1500. It doesn't let me make it. Let me go 150 years term. Fuck, that doesn't do shit. I don't do anything to it. Um, damn. Well, I'm going to have to just hit him with, with actually the, the actual am and be like, yo, bro, check it out. That I can't do this at all. But if you work with me and do this and this and that, Uh, true investment but if he can't help me out this ain't gonna work but you know i think he might be open to it he's just a little bit woozy on the phone didn't want to talk so let's get to that a little bit later maybe tomorrow morning uh dustin i could type up a like a like an offer to him and send it over uh, what i can cash flow and i'll send them over like I'll screenshot like the AM schedule and show them like here. Here's why. Here's why I need it like this because you're not letting me cash flow. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So we'll do that one. Got this email. Five eleven. Anybody have a deal? I'm gonna call the the, the builder tomorrow because I have a couple other things I gotta do and type up um, a couple deals. So anybody else in here has has um, a lead that you need me to follow up on? Aaron, that was your deal that we were working right now. Yeah, I heard. That's how he was on the, on the phone. I was with him. He was just like very hesitant to get off. He was very difficult to talk with. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. Let's see. Anybody? Uh, I mean, I are you calling tomorrow again? Because I have another um, portfolio, multifamily, three multifamily properties. Um, it's also through an agent. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, the seller, she talked to the seller and the seller is open to, to them. So I don't know if we can, we can call tomorrow. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Three to six is the best time. If not, let me know. And um, I could try to to squeeze it in beforehand, but typically I'm I'm pretty slammed right now. A lot of things are going on, a lot of deals. Yeah. So three to six is always the best time to catch me for live calls. I like them. It's just they become easier. They're fun. Like in They're fun. like in the Zoom, three in the Zoom. I like doing everything on Zoom because I I like to record things now, so I can send them to other people or put them on mentorship and whatnot. So yeah, Zooms. Okay. 
even if you know you, you and I are in a three way, it's cool. I'll just do a one on Zoom with myself, record the whole thing, and so I can still have it. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. I will. I will ask them at what time. Yeah, and then I definitely want to work that deal tomorrow. I'm going to underwrite that with Stan. So then, Annie, we can work on that quadplex. I was already looking at it and looking at the money that I might need down and all this stuff. So I mean, I'm actually interested in it because I can make. I can. We can make it make sense uh, as long as he's open to okay. it. Okay. Cool. Perfect. Thanks, Carlos. No, thank you, Annie. Anybody in here have any questions, any deals you'd like me to, to call for you? Anything I can help you out with? I got a FISBO. You can call if you want. Send it over. All right. Cool. Um, yeah, I talked to him last night, and um, I found it on Zillow. It's in Idaho. It's uh, You want the address? I knew you were a hoe. You know I'm the hoe. You are the hoe, bro. He's like hoe. dust. As he stamped it. He lives there. <laughs> All right, uh, cool. Text it over to me, yeah? Okay. Yeah, I'll text it. But yeah, I talked to him last night. Um, he uh, is an investor and has other properties too. They're just unloading this one. And they have tenants in there that were due, are due to be out the, the 13th of December. Um, he said it'll rent for 1900 a month. It's being rented right now for 1700 So it's under what it, what it even should, could be, he said. Um, but he said he... The tenants leave when? The 13th? Yes, 13th. Okay. He's, he's actually pl placing them into another one of his, one of his properties. Um, so yeah, they're just looking to unload this one, but, and he would be open to terms as well. Um, but I think he needs a little bit of a larger down payment. Um, but I'm not, I'm not sure. I didn't get to the point to ask him if that's really what he needs. Um, he got, he got busy. Like we, something happened though. Um, the line, I don't know what messed up or whatever, and we lost each other. And then he said, asked if he could call me back because he was busy. And then I, I haven't talked to him yet. So, um, yeah, I'm going to text okay. it over to you right now. I'll call that one. That'll be the last one for the day for me. And then I got to finish off with a couple of things, go for another workout, and then start my other, my other third mini day right here in a little bit. So, yeah, starting tomorrow, I'll get back on some new calls with you guys, but this will be the last call. Let me know what you're saying. Eight, three. Okay, just sending the address. All right. And sending you the phone number now. Did he give you a, uh, oh yeah, he, he already has it listed on there, okay. Yeah. So I'll be able to see it all. You guys talk numbers yet or no? Or try to no, uh, loosely. No. Is this in Nampa? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Pretty nice house. Yeah, it's a pretty nice place. I don't think it'll really need much. That's why he's pretty he's pretty firm on price, but he's open to terms. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. All right. And I, he understands the business call. model that we need to, we just need to cash flow, all that. Like I explained kind of rundown of the business model. Go ahead. Okay, cool. 369,000. Did he say I'm amount of money down or he's just open to the call? He said 100K. All right, 100K. But, and then I was just getting to the point where I was going to ask him if he needed 100K or if he was just saying 100K because it sounded safe. Yeah, 102 days on Zillow, three plus months. He ain't going to get this price if he doesn't hurry it up. So let's go ahead and, and do this. What's his... Uh, uh, What's his name? I want to think he, I want, I think he said Joe, but I wouldn't murder it. I would just not go with the name. 
Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah, I'm just gonna tell him I don't know your name, bro. Does he know but I, your I name? spoke I spoke to him last night though. Does he know your name? Uh he should. I don't know. Depends depends if he smokes as much weed as me. Maybe, maybe he doesn't. Who knows? I don't know who has worse weed, you or them. So, nah. I mean, as far as like <laughs> Idaho or, or or Ohio, I mean, I'm in California yeah. at the most. Idaho, Idaho. Idaho. Not that I'm, I'm not even smoking right now either. I'm on my disciplinary stage. Yeah. Um. So let me call this motherfucker up. Everybody on mute. The roll. Hello, this is Bob. Hey, what's up, Bob? This is Carlos. How you doing, man? Carlos? Yeah, you had uh, you actually we, we don't know each other. You had spoken to my my associate Josh last night about a property that you have for sale off of Sixth Ave in Nampa. Oh yes. Did you have a couple yes. minutes? I, I I just wanted to talk to you really quick. Yep, if we can make it really quick, because I'm on my way out. Okay, yeah, I don't want to take up too much time. Real quick, I just wanted to go over a couple things. Um, he did let me know that. That you know your purchase price, you're open to selling it um, on terms on seller finance. He he let me know that you have tenants in place that leave on the 13th. They're currently paying 17, and market is 19. Is that right? I think the market might be even higher, but anyways, yeah, I think the market is probably closer to over two grand. Okay, and I'll and I'll take a look at that. I'll, I'll do my okay. due diligence as well. So this is where I'm at. Um, we, we do purchase all types of ways. We've been able to purchase at higher prices, especially now with this, this um, slower economy and the market going a little bit haywire. We've been able to purchase these properties because um, I do see that it's been listed for some time. So I'm able to actually not waste your time and, and lowball you. I can say, hey, I can pay 369. He let me know that I believe you needed 100 grand down, right? Um, and I would have to clear that with the rest of the group. There's oh. a, we're an investment group. Okay. So, so way it works is, and I'm sure he broke it down. All I need is a good cash on cash return, right? So if I'm going to put a hundred grand down or something, what is my return going to be on that? And so that's how I need to look at this thing. Is there, for, for us to hash out the money down, would this need to be a different call so you can talk to your partners or... Um, cause that's what I need to know. Cause I might not be able to put a hundred grand down if my cash on cash return doesn't suit us. So we can give you a higher number. We just need a cash flow as well. That's all it is. Okay. And I, and I'll, I'll tell you, I've been running the numbers and if you do that, you probably won't make any money. With a hundred grand down, right? Right. Yeah. Is there a certain amount that you guys need down? Well, um, let, let me before we waste a whole bunch of time with yours, the we, the only reason it's been on there so long is because we're we're finishing another unit that took us three months to get the people out. Oh, man. And the God. people that are in that unit are going to be moving over. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the other and the house on six, I've got a list as long as two arms of people that are waiting to buy it. I bet, man. I bet because every time I call yeah. sellers, they're always like, I got so many people in line. <laughs> yeah yeah because it's the lowest it's probably one probably the lowest house per square foot priced in nampa still yeah yeah you guys are you guys are you guys came up a lot in the last few years in market i know a lot of california yep. a lot of people moved over over there the mm -hmm. values of homes yes. came up a lot for sure yes they did yeah um so. So yeah, I, I can do all, all these things. I, I bought multiple. Actually, I haven't bought like a discounted property in a while <laughs> since since this happened. So many homeowners don't want to take discounts, which which is fine. I don't have to do that if I buy it this way. So um, I just needed to see, you know, maybe you can talk to, to the, your team and see, you know, what amount down makes sense. And then and then we can maybe jump on another phone and hash out like the payments to you and what I can make. Well, if if you pay three sixty nine, you put a hundred thousand dollars down. That's a loan at two point two two sixty nine. Uh -huh. At two sixty nine, at five and a half percent, you're going to be right at thirteen fourteen hundred dollars a month just for interest alone. By the time you pay the taxes and insurance, you're going to maybe make a hundred bucks. 
So then how do we, how do we hash those out and work it out so I can pay you the higher price and I can still make money? Um, you can pay the whole amount. Right. It, I can, I can buy cash. It's just because of the high interest rate, I would have to get a discount. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to actually cash flow at like okay. six or 8%. You get me? Um, mm -hmm. So either five and a half percent and, and, you know, a lot less down and maybe a lower number could make sense. Or maybe we can do 369, still give you interest on this and, and make cash flow. How I look at it is I just need cash flow on this one. If I'm not going to be making any money on the purchase, like on the price, I need some cash flow. And so I could even extend the term, even with the interest to see if it works. Like, Hey, if I'm financing it from you for 10 years, but I need to put 40 or 50 years on the AM just to get a payment that makes sense to us. And that really doesn't really bother the deal. Cause it just makes me ensure that I'm making money in it. So I wouldn't need to hash them out. Like how you said, if you, if I just pay interest at five and a half percent, it's already 1400 bucks. And not that I can't do that. It's just, it won't make me any money if I'm putting a large amount of money down. So to it, we just, we, we just need to massage it a little bit. So then we can see if it at least makes sense for me as well. Yeah. How long have you done uh, this type of investing? How long? I don't know, like a year, uh -huh. maybe. A year? Yeah. So okay. I come from. I can, I can, I can guarantee you this one won't work for you. Why is that? Uh, because by the time you put the money down. Mm -hmm. By the time you make the get the get it rented out, mm -hmm. it's going not going to make you cash flow. You're going to be this is going to be a negative cash flow. Right, right. So how do I make a cash flow with you though? Because the year doesn't matter. Right? I I mean I've been I've been a business owner and, and director for lots of okay. big companies. I own a lot of homes now, so it's not hard okay. to have a good team. I just wanted to see. Yeah, you won't be able to. Why not? Because unless you want to make more pay more payment, then it's then it's worth. And that, more payment than what you're going to be collecting each month, it won't work. Got you. So, so yeah, you know what? If it doesn't fit me, then obviously a homeowner would be the one to work with so they can pay those higher interests and, and payments. But let's say that you can't get that number, though, out of all those people you have lined up. Um, I might not be able to buy it right now how we're talking. But let's say that you you guys are not able to get the number you're looking for. Think of me because this phone call can't really go much further if, if I can't cash flow with you. But okay. just know that if we do buy it right at, at a higher purchase price and, and do give you interest, that those prices probably, you know, won't be seen over the next three or six months since we are in that recession going down. So I know that you'd lock up a higher purchase price with the interest rate. And then at the same time, since it's not an all cash purchase, it's obviously you're not going to have to pay any gains on the difference of what I give you down. And so we could, you know, we can make it a true investment and beneficial. But like I said, as long as, you know, maybe it doesn't make sense for your other buyers to buy it from you. If it doesn't go that route, I'm going to always be here. I would just need okay. to rework the numbers with you. Even if it was like, if I paid like maybe interest only payments for a year or two, so I can cash flow correctly. And then we then amortize it. Um, so we could always do the gradual payments in there, or we can always do something where lower interest and maybe a little bit more on the purchase price. So then it hashes it out as well. So we can always work and we work all types of ways. It's just, I want to also achieve your team's goals with you. Okay. I can, I can tell you this. I've done this for 35 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would not get involved with this. If you're trying to do what you're trying to do for two reasons. Mm -hmm. Okay. You make one step sideways without paying that payment. And these guys will take your house back. Correct. That's how and I will lose. You your hundred grand yeah i have okay. a i have a performance mortgage deed that does the okay. same thing for you so i'm yep. very aware of that okay and the thing is by the time you if you put a hundred thousand dollars down mm -hmm. you're not going to make anything on your hundred grand you're going to pay the interest on the two hundred and sixty thousand dollars left over mm -hmm. even if it was interest only that's thir almost thirteen hundred a month mm -hmm. right. okay so, so thirteen hundred dollars a month plus the taxes, mm -hmm. which are about three hundred a month. Yeah, okay, so good. that that's sixteen hundred, and then by the time you pay your insurance, that's another hundred and fifty, and you're not going to make any money. Yeah, well, of course, with with those numbers, right? I mean, not that okay. way for sure. I mean, if we okay. massage the, the interest and everything, then yeah. But other than that, the way that I see you looking at this deal is just mainly for your benefit. So it obviously won't help me, right? 
Um, and Correct. that's because I, I understand you're looking at it as an investor with a team. So I, I totally get it because I'm an investor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those numbers yeah. don't work with me, obviously, since since yeah. I'm the investor trying to make money. Because we we have we have uh we have uh, programs that are real estate programs mm -hmm. that tell you how to make money with the real estate. Right. And this one would not make real at what you're trying to do with us. Right, right. If we did it the way we were gonna do with the way we would set it up, you won't make money on this and for 10 years. Oh, I know it doesn't. It doesn't sound interesting at all. I believe me. I was looking at it. It yeah. doesn't sound interesting at the hundred grand down. Nope. I was waiting to see. Not going to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It won't. And um, I'm just looking out. For, I'm looking out for you. No, I appreciate okay. it, and I'm not here to yeah. hassle you. And be like, yo, give me a lower interest so it makes sense. I just want you to go do your thing. If you can't get that, maybe I could okay. be here and still give you a higher price and interest if we can make it work. But if not, I understand well, what you're you, for. You might, you might put my number down and call me back in about sixty days because. We're finished. I'm actually at the one house where the tenant's moving right now. And we're going to have them moving in around the 15th of December, which then we'll move our crew back over to that house on six. Okay. And going to make sure it's all dolled up because right now it's got a new roof, new windows, new HVAC. Um, it's getting the, the hardwood floors are getting refinished. It's all been repainted inside and out. And anyways, the house is premium. Sounds like it, man. So, Sounds great. It is. And so anyways, to once we get back over there and the people come that are listed already for to do walkthroughs, it shouldn't, it won't last. No, I, I got you. But, you you know, you selling it on a wrap, like yeah. you're going to do great. If you sell it on a yeah. wrap and you sell it to a, to a homestead buyer, for sure. That's what I do. It's one of my main mm -hmm. strategies is doing exactly how you're doing yeah. it and making the high interest and everything. Um, but me as an investor on the other side, I can't, I can't accept that the home buyer. Though, I the, understand the it. right person. I, sure. Right. I understand that. So anyways, if you want to call me back in about 60 days and check and see what happened to it, you're welcome to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And let me ask you, Bob, okay. is there anything that you and your team have that does work my, um, with my business models? Uh, not right now. Okay. And let me ask you only, one more question. It's the only one we're putting up for sale right now, because we know. have one of our investors that's retiring. Okay. And he's gonna he's gonna liquidate. We're liquidating one property to pay him out. Okay, that I got you. Okay. I definitely got you. He's yep. out. He's exiting. Well, let me ask you: Are you and your team always looking to acquire more? Um, we're actually getting old enough where nobody wants to buy anymore right now. We've got commercial properties, and if we do anything, we're con convert our residential into commercial. Got you, got you. Okay, cool. So yeah. I'm I'm in that field as well. Let, let me ask you one more thing okay. before I let you go, Bob. Um, are you mm -hmm. and your team actively, you know, lending or funding real estate transactions? No, only for ourselves. Got you. Makes sense. Yep. Okay. Yep. Well, I just wanted to get you know my two cents in there and see if we can work together. Okay. okay. I appreciate that. But anyway, if you want to check back with me in you know 45 to 60 days to see what happened, you're more than welcome. All right. You have a good one. Okay. Enjoy yourself. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Happy holidays. Okay. Bye. Bye. That's the way the cookie crumbles, guys. He's you got it. 60 days. What's up? 45. He threw the 45 in there. Oh, he said 60 days like a thousand times. <laughs> he dropped it to 45, I think, right? Yeah. At the very end. Yeah. I didn't even hear him, you know? Honestly, I just... Yeah, you see how I how I, I agreed with him and just told him, well, yeah, absolutely. When you're looking at it for your own benefit, 100%, it's not going to work, right? Didn't bother me, me understanding my education, him being 35 years in the game. How much did I know and, and just respond with him in the 10 months that I've been here? I have people that have been here for 20, 30 years in the game that's taught me as well. I didn't, he might be able to foresee and do way more stuff than I do at this current moment. Congratulations to him. He earned it and everything, but it doesn't mean that I can't do things myself, but for sure, the way that he presented the deal, he was right. I'm not going to cash flow at all with what he's trying to do. He's trying to sell it on a wrap on, on the seller finance like that. Um, if he's going to make that happen because it won't cash flow that way. Any questions on that? Draw a 60 day follow up, okay, or 40 day or whatever, 30, just get fucking January, we'll call him. Um, follow up with that guy. His name's Bob. I do have a question. I, I didn't What's understand up? if he, I didn't understand if he really understood that you could bring down that payment. Do you think he got, he got that or was it just me that he just, no, he, seem like he, like he knew that. that he's just not trying to sell to an investor. Yeah, hundred percent. He was up. That's why he was like, you you can't buy this because you won't make any money, right? And that's why I said 
Yeah, because you're only looking at it as your benefit, trying to max it out. That's why, because you're not seeing me as the investor trying to buy it. And so he said, you're not going to make money. And I said, why? He goes, because you're not. Well, I mean, if you massage the numbers, right? But he doesn't want to. So he understood what I was trying to do, but I'm not achieving any of his goals at all. The other people lined up might be home buyers. That's going to be easy sale at five and a half percent when that shit's renovated. Five and a half percent is lower than market rates right now. That would a home buyer would buy that on a wrap for sure. Cool guys. Much love. Good night. I'll post this up here maybe tomorrow or tonight. Okay. It's recorded. Hope you guys learned a lot. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Carlos. What's up, Daniel? Carlos. Hey, what's up, man? Before you go, I send you a link for the uh, the trust thing that I we were talking on Instagram. Uh huh. That is one tomorrow at ten a.m. Ten a.m. tomorrow. 10 Everybody a. invited or just me? I could Hi. invite everybody. If you allow me to put the link on the uh, Telegram, I'll invite everybody. Put it on the Facebook, dude. Telegram, whatever you want. You can drop it in the side chat. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, cool. 10 a.m. Pacific. I guess that's, that's your time, right? Yeah, 10 a.m. Pacific time. Tomorrow. I'll All put right, it on cool. my to-do tomorrow so I can take a look at it with you. Remind me in the morning, bro. I, I literally put it down on my on my, my sticky note right now. All right, cool, cool, cool. Thank you, Daniel. Everybody have a good night, okay? All right, good night.